Strange Magic, written by Susanna Thompson, narrated by Sarah Sampino. Chapter 1 The first time I saw him was in a dream. I stood in the park beneath darkening clouds. A storm was approaching. Susanna, a deep male voice called behind me. I turned to see a guy about my age, standing several feet away from me. He had jet black hair. His eyes were the palest blue I had ever seen. We stared at each other as the wind picked up and started to play with my long hair. I stood mesmerized by his eyes as he began to walk toward me. My heart was beating wildly. The air seemed to be charged with electricity. How much of it was between us and how much was coming from the storm, I couldn't tell. In the way of dreams, it took him a long time to reach me. Finally, he was standing close, and I was looking up into those incredible eyes. He leaned down to kiss me. As his lips touched mine, the storm broke within me. I felt disoriented when I awoke, to find sunshine streaming in through my bedroom window. I closed my eyes again, wanting the dream to continue, but it was no use. Damn. What a dream. What a guy. What a kiss. It had been wild. I had never experienced such a kiss in real life. I was almost 17. So far, I had only had one boyfriend. I had enjoyed kissing him, but it hadn't even come close to the passion in my dream. Maybe we wouldn't have broken up if we'd had that kind of heat. Kevin and I had dated for three months. When I wouldn't go further than kissing, he'd broken up with me. Of course, he didn't exactly come out and say that, but I knew that was the reason. I wasn't a prude. I just wanted to wait until I was in love. I missed having a boyfriend, but I didn't miss Kevin all that much. I definitely wasn't in love with him. He wasn't in love with me either, since he quickly found a new girlfriend. I stretched lazily. It was my last day to sleep in. School would begin the next day. No more hanging out at the pool with my best friend, Caitlin. We were going shopping for our back-to-school outfit. I put on a pair of shorts and a matching top and headed down to the kitchen. Mom and Dad were both at work. At least we were easing back into school mode with only three days the first week. Too bad we couldn't have Monday and Tuesday off every week. As I poured myself a bowl of cereal, I was still thinking about my dream. Where had that come from? I didn't know any guys who looked like that. I would have thought that I'd dream about my crush. Brad was blonde with baby blue eyes. He was a football player and completely out of my league. Plus, he already had a girlfriend. Mandy was a cheerleader. My cell phone interrupted my thoughts. It was Caitlin. Are you ready? I'm coming to pick you up. She didn't wait for a reply. I quickly finished eating breakfast. Caitlin was knocking on my door shortly after I got done brushing my teeth. I told her about my dream as she drove to the mall. Ooh, hot. I bet it's a sign that you'll find a new boyfriend soon. I laughed. Caitlin believed in such things. She was always checking her horoscope. It was part of her dramatic personality. She planned to go to Hollywood and become an actress when she finished high school. It probably just means that I've been reading too many romance novels. I said, and now it's time to start living it, Caitlin said, as we pulled into the mall parking lot. I ignored that comment. Tell me again why we need to buy something else when we already spent so much money here last week. Caitlin sighed. I told you, we need a special trip for this. The first day of school is very important. What we wear tomorrow will set an impression in people's minds. I laughed again. They already have an impression of us. Most of them have known us for years. You never know, Caitlin said. People can change over the summer. I remember this as being the last normal day. You can take normality for granted. People call it the same old, same old. Half of the time I lived in my own world. I was given to daydreaming. I craved excitement and adventure. Being average in every way didn't make me appreciate what I had. I had average looks and average grades. I didn't even have a musical or artistic talent. I didn't realize then what it meant to have the easy companionship of someone you've been friends with since second grade. 
Caitlin and I went from store to store. In the end, I bought an outfit that was similar to the clothes I usually wore. An exasperated Caitlin gave up. You say that you want to stand out, but you won't step out of your comfort zone. You won't even try a new hairstyle. You hide behind that long hair. Maybe you're right, I admitted. I guess I'm just not ready to change. Anyway, Caitlin bounced back to her usual excited self. Let's enjoy our last day of freedom. The rest of the day passed quickly. Before I knew it, bedtime crept up on me. It was hard to fall asleep because I was nervous about going back to school. It seemed like I'd just closed my eyes and my alarm was ringing. There had been no dreams about gorgeous guys with pale blue eyes. I couldn't remember dreaming about anything at all. I ate my usual milk and cereal for breakfast. Then I got ready for school. I put on the black skirt and bright red top I had bought the day before. Caitlin had talked me into buying the red top. You should at least wear some color if you won't show any skin. You look very pretty, my dad said when I came back downstairs. Yes, my mom agreed. Very pretty. I had never had an argument with my parents over what to wear. I just wasn't a rebel. Caitlin was right. I was too scared to step out of my comfort zone. But she was used to being the center of attention. She had been in every school play we'd ever had. She was always changing her look. Right now, her hair was red. I hurried out to meet her when I saw her pull into our driveway. Any more hot dreams? I shook my head. No, I'm starting off the year right. I'm ready to focus on studying. Caitlin laughed. Girl, you won't remember any of that ten years from now. What do people talk about at reunions? It's sure not what they studied. It's the experiences they had. She was right again. I found myself excited to see everyone after the summer. We all said hi to each other as we walked to our lockers. We stopped at Caitlin's locker first. I was talking about Brad's great tan when I stopped in mid-sentence. All I could do was stare. Caitlin turned to see what had grabbed my attention. I heard her gasp. That's how I knew that I wasn't hallucinating. Now there was a sound in my ears like rushing water. It was my blood. Whether it had rushed into my head or out of it, I couldn't tell. Everything seemed to be happening in slow motion. My heart was in my throat. There had been other people here a second ago. Now there was only him. The hallway stretched into infinity behind him. It was like he had stepped straight out of my dream. He was even wearing the same clothes. I stood rooted to the spot as he walked right past me without even glancing my way. Susie! Susie! Caitlin grabbed my arm when I didn't respond. I finally looked at her. I seemed to be hearing her voice across a great distance. Susie! Caitlin shook me. You look like you've seen a ghost. Was that? I mean, that guy looked like the guy you said you dreamed about. No, I said. That was him. That was the exact same guy. Wow. Caitlin recovered quickly. Do you know what this means? That guy is your destiny. What? I could barely comprehend what she was saying. I just kept wondering how this could be possible. Caitlin was bursting with excitement. You dreamed about him before you met him. He must be your soulmate. This is so cool. The warning bell rang. I bet he's a new student. We have to find out his name. I'll see you at lunch, Caitlin said as she hurried to class. We hadn't had time to go to my locker. I didn't have anything to put in it anyway. Caitlin had already brought a little mirror to hang in hers. We had gotten our locker numbers and combinations and orientation the week before. I was thinking about inconsequential things, rational things, in an attempt to calm down. Somehow, I managed to push aside my confusion and deal with meeting my new teachers. Luckily, there wasn't much to do on the first day. By the time I got to my third class, what had happened that morning seemed almost like another dream. Then, as I sat down at an empty desk, I heard the girl beside me ask, Who is that? By the way she said it, I knew who I would see before I looked up. He still took my breath away, especially when he sat down at the desk right next to me. This time, he noticed me staring at him. Hi he said in that voice I knew from my dream. I'm Duncan McKenna. Hi, 
I breathed. I'm Susanna Hastings. Nice to meet you, Susanna, he said politely. Then the second bell rang. Duncan turned his attention to the teacher. He introduced himself as Mr. Gates. After he took attendance, he informed us that these would be our seats for the rest of the year. I would be sitting next to Duncan every day. Almost everyone called me Susie. I had introduced myself to Duncan with my full name because I had wanted him to say it like he had in my dream. Thinking about my dream made me blush. Duncan didn't notice. He seemed underwhelmed by me. I saw him checking out the girl sitting in the row on the other side of him. Brad's girlfriend, Mandy. Mandy had the kind of body that turned heads, and she dressed to show it off. My crush on Brad seemed like the distant past. All I could think about was Duncan. It was going to be hard to concentrate in this class. Thank goodness it was English, which was one of my better subjects. So much for starting off the year ready to study. Caitlin was bubbling over with news when I saw her at lunch. His name is Duncan McKenna. He moved from California. Why would anyone leave California and move to Ohio? I would kill to live in California. I could go on auditions all the time. I'm sure you would have your own show by now, I agreed. Caitlin was ecstatic when she found out that I had a class with Duncan. You talked to him already? This is great. Did you tell him about your dream? Caitlin, I would never tell him about my dream. He would think I was crazy. You want me to tell him? No! I yelled a little too loudly. I lowered my voice. It's too embarrassing. Besides, he seemed pretty interested in Mandy. That's good, Caitlin said. Now we know for sure he's into girls. Guys can't help but look at Mandy. But you're his destiny. That dream has to mean something. I wasn't so sure. It was hard to believe that a guy like Duncan could ever be interested in me. I didn't know what to think about my dream. I decided to try to put the whole thing out of my mind. It turned out that I only had the one class with Duncan. That would make it easier to focus on learning. Stop it, I told myself. Duncan is just a guy, like any other guy. I was not going to obsess over him. Convincing Caitlin to drop the subject would be another story. I could only hope that once she started rehearsing for the next school play, that she would be too distracted to worry about my love life. As expected, during the ride home, Caitlin was brainstorming ways for me to get Duncan to ask me out. I kept trying to change the subject. Caitlin stopped at a red light and turned to look at me. Come on, Susie. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened to you. Don't tell me that you're scared. Scared of what? Scared to take a chance, like always? Caitlin said. I'm not scared, I said defensively. I just don't see any reason to chase after him. It's not chasing, Caitlin said as she pulled into my driveway. It's just encouraging his interest in you. But, I said, as an idea formed of how to get her to cool it with this. If he's my destiny, then I don't need to do anything. It'll happen anyway. Well, Caitlin said. She thought about it for a minute. Well, I guess that's true, but I cut her off. It's settled. I just wait and see what happens. Caitlin laughed. So what's different? Anyway, I don't have time to argue with you. Alex is taking me out for ice cream before he goes to work. Caitlin, I squealed. He asked you out and you didn't even tell me? She had developed a crush on Alex during the last few months of school last year. Caitlin smiled triumphantly. He said that I look good with red hair. See, if you would change your look, you'd get more attention. Call me later, I said. I want all the details. I waved as she drove off. I went into the house and set down my backpack. I had no homework yet, and it was too early to start dinner. After changing into shorts and a t-shirt, I felt restless. I decided to go for a walk. That always helped to clear my head. There was a park at the end of our street. I often liked to walk there and lose myself in my thoughts. A couple of joggers ran past me. Otherwise, I was alone on the path. This was the same park from my dream. There was nothing unusual about that. This place was very familiar to me. It was not surprising that it would be the setting of my dream. The part of my dream that I couldn't explain was Duncan. How was it possible that I had dreamt about him in such vivid detail 
when I had never seen him before in my life. I had even been right about the sound of his voice. Suddenly, Duncan was in front of me, as if my thoughts had conjured him. Hi, he said. You're in my English class. Susanna, right? Yes, hi, I said. And you're Duncan. Yes, he smiled. I'm new here. I thought I'd explore the neighborhood a little. This is a nice park. Yes, I said. I walk here almost every day. I live on Chestnut Avenue. I wanted to kick myself. What did he care what street I lived on? What street do you live on? Great, now I sounded like a stalker. Duncan didn't seem to mind. I live on Brookdale, he volunteered. Oh, I said. My best friend Caitlin lives on that street. She's so jealous that you lived in California, it's her dream to move there. How did you know that I lived in California? A suspicious note had crept into Duncan's voice. I blushed deeply. You said that you're new here. Word travels fast at Valley View High, and Caitlin is always in the know. I think she has a source in the school office. Oh. Duncan visibly relaxed. I'll be happy to tell Caitlin about life in California. You can introduce me to her. I didn't like that idea at all. Caitlin living on the same street as him was too close for comfort. Who knew what she might be tempted to tell him? Your mother is worried about you, I said absently. Then his cell phone rang. He pulled it out of his pocket and answered it. Hi, Mom. He listened to the reply, all the while regarding me with those pale blue eyes. Yes, I'm sorry, I just lost track of time. I'll be home soon. Okay. Bye, Mom. Now Duncan was the one staring at me. How did you know that? I shifted nervously. What? He stepped closer to me. It seemed like he was looking right through me. How did you know that my mom was about to call me? I did, didn't. With him standing so close, it was hard to think. My heart was racing as wildly as in my dream. I was mesmerized by those eyes of his. He was looking at me so intently. His gaze held me there as time seemed to stop. Then he abruptly stepped back. I should get home. See you at school. He turned quickly and walked back the way he had come. I stood there as feeling suddenly bereft as I watched him walk away. Gradually, I became aware of the passing of time. I began to walk back home. What had just happened? I replayed our conversation in my mind. Your mother is worried about you. Where had that come from? My ordinary life was becoming weirder by the minute. Chapter 2 For the first time in my life, I had a secret. I had debated how much to tell Caitlin about my encounter with Duncan in the park. As promised, she had called to tell me about her date with Alex. She was thrilled that he had asked her to go out with him again that weekend. After that, I casually mentioned my conversation with Duncan except for the strange turn it had taken in the end. I couldn't even explain what had happened to myself, let alone to Caitlin. Instead, I allowed her to indulge in fantasies about future double dates. I had dinner ready when my parents arrived home from work. We talked about my first day of school. I told them about my classes. Because he was so much on my mind, I even mentioned Duncan, the new student. So, my mom said while we were loading the dishwasher. Do you like this new boy? I looked at her in surprise. What makes you think that? Mom laughed. Don't be so shocked. I was young once, too. Is he cute? I shrugged. He's okay, I guess. You guess, huh? Nice try. So definitely cute. Mom winked at me. I dropped the casual attitude. Mom, do you think I should cut my hair? Do you want to cut your hair? I shook my head. No, but Caitlin thinks I should change my look. Mom's expression became serious. Oh, honey, don't think that you need to change for anyone. If this boy doesn't like you the way you are, then he doesn't deserve you. If you change your look, it should only be to please yourself. Thanks, Mom. I gave her a heartfelt hug. Still, I fussed over my appearance the next morning. I felt nervous about seeing Duncan again. The last time I saw him, 
the mood between us had been tense. I was surprised when he greeted me with a friendly smile when I saw him in English class. Hi, Susanna. How are you today? I smiled at him uncertainly. I'm, uh, fine. How are you? He continued on in the same friendly tone. Very well. I'm getting to know more people here. It was hard to leave my friends behind and start over at a new school. I was relieved that he seemed to have forgotten about yesterday's strange episode in the park. Our chat was interrupted by Mr. Gates calling the class to order. I was only half listening to his lecture. Hope awakened within me. Maybe Duncan liking me wasn't so far-fetched. Maybe Caitlin was right. Maybe I should listen to her and change my look. Maybe I will cut my hair. I mused. I hope you don't cut your hair, Duncan said pensively. I really like it long. I turned to look at him. I hadn't realized that I had spoken aloud. Thank you, I said, taking pleasure in his compliment. I'm so used to it being this length that I don't think I could cut it really short. The appraising way that Duncan was looking at me made me suddenly nervous again. Caitlin says that I should at least change the color. She says it's too plain. I realized that I was rambling and looked down at my desk in embarrassment. I don't think it's plain at all, Duncan said. It's quite a beautiful rich brown. I looked at him shyly. Thanks. That's so nice of you to say. Ben, the boy sitting behind me, tapped my shoulder. You better put your cell phone away. If Gates catches you, he'll give you detention. I don't... At least text if you have to. You can do that quietly. I'm not talking on the phone. Right, Ben said. You were just talking to yourself. We were interrupted by Mr. Gates. What is going on here? You're supposed to be taking notes. I give pop quizzes regularly. You need to pay attention if you hope to pass this class. He stalked back to the front of the class to continue his lecture. I looked at Duncan in bewilderment. I like your pretty brown eyes, too, he said. His lips never moved. As soon as class was over, I sprang from my seat and rushed to the restroom. I splashed cool water on my flushed face. What was happening to me? Was I losing my mind? My stomach lurched at the thought of Duncan hearing me talking to myself. What must he think of me now? It was all too much. I went straight to the nurse. My mom left work and picked me up. I wanted to hide in my room forever. I don't know about leaving you here by yourself, Mom said anxiously. I can reschedule my meeting. No, I said. I'll be fine. I just need to lie down for a while. Mom still looked uncertain. You're not running a fever, but you look flushed. I hope you're not coming down with something. I assured her that I would call her if I needed anything. I finally convinced her to leave. If only rest could truly cure what ailed me. I wondered if it was possible to actually die from embarrassment. How could I ever face Duncan again? I went over everything that had happened since I met him. If I hadn't told Caitlin about my dream, I would have thought that I imagined the whole thing. Maybe I would have written it off as a case of deja vu. Now I couldn't make sense of anything. Caitlin called during her lunch break. Where are you? I told her that I had suddenly taken ill. I'm sorry I didn't text you to let you know I was going home, but I felt terrible. Oh, Susie, I'm sorry. I hope it's not the flu. It seems like it's too early for the flu. No, I think it's just an upset stomach. I don't have a fever. I wanted to pour my heart out to Caitlin and tell her everything. I felt scared and lonely and confused. This was not something that I could get into over the phone, however. Ever optimistic, Caitlin was sure that I would feel better after lots of rest. You'll be back to normal tomorrow. You'll see. I wondered if anything would ever be normal again. Hearing Caitlin's voice did make me feel a little better. She quickly got to what she had been dying to tell me. Did you hear? Mandy broke up with Brad. Can you believe it? They've been going together for what? Like two years, I think. Just a couple of days ago, this news would have made me secretly happy. It would have given me hope, however unrealistic, that I now had a chance with Brad. Caitlin was right. Brad and Mandy had been Valley View High's golden couple for a long time. This news did nothing to cheer me up. I was mostly quiet as Caitlin talked about the breakup. 
Okay, Caitlin said. I can tell that you really are sick. Feel better soon. I'll see you tomorrow morning. I spent the rest of the day in bed. Mom tried to get me to eat something, but I couldn't stomach the thought of food. My sleep that night was fractured. I got ready for school with a knot in my stomach. At least it was Friday. I just had to make it through today. When Caitlin picked me up for school, I immediately launched into an enthusiastic conversation about her date with Alex that evening. She wasn't fooled. She was uncharacteristically silent for a while. Okay, she said. What is going on with you? Don't tell me that you're just not feeling well. I can see that you're upset. What happened? I looked away. Honestly, I don't know where to begin. Does it have something to do with Duncan? Caitlin was already pulling into the school parking lot when she asked me that question. Yes, I said. It has a lot to do with Duncan, but we don't have time to talk about this now. Okay, Caitlin agreed. At lunch, then. I shook my head. I can't talk about this at school. Can you come over my house tomorrow? I can stop over after school, Caitlin said as we got out of her car. No, I said. This will take a while. You need to get ready for your date. Caitlin stopped walking. Susie, have you been keeping secrets from me? I demand that you tell me everything. I will. I nudged her to get her going. I promise I'll tell you everything tomorrow. We parted ways when we entered the school. We didn't have time to stop at our lockers together. Once I didn't have her to distract me, my distress returned to a heightened state. I dreaded seeing Duncan again. Maybe I would cut English today. To my dismay, Duncan was waiting for me by my locker. I stared at him wide-eyed. Then I dropped my gaze to the floor. If only it would open up and swallow me. I was overcome with embarrassment. Bravo, Duncan said. You are quite the actress. I looked up at him to make sure that he was actually speaking this time. The friendly demeanor was gone. He had a cynical smirk on his face. Oh, nice touch with the innocent eyes. What are you talking about? My voice came out in barely more than a whisper. Duncan got in my face. Do you think I'm a fool? I, I don't, I sputtered. I'm warning you, Duncan said. Stay away from me. I'm not in the mood for your games. With that, he spun around and stormed off. I stared after him, my embarrassment forgotten. Hysteria threatened to overwhelm me. Of all the reactions I had been expecting, anger was not one of them. What could I possibly have done to provoke him to such hostility? Chapter 3 In English class, I started to get an inkling of why Mandy had broken up with Brad. It was obvious that she had set her sights on Duncan. It was also obvious that he was not opposed to her attention. I sat numbly and watched her toss her blonde hair back and smile coyly at him. She asked to borrow a pen from him. Then she pulled at her skirt and drew his eyes to her shapely legs. Duncan ignored me almost the entire class, which left me free to observe his reaction to Mandy. This helped to distract me from what had happened between us that morning. She's the kind of girl I need, Duncan said. Someone who is normal and uncomplicated. I don't need any more complications in my life. It was happening again. I knew that he wasn't talking to me. I knew that it was some kind of auditory hallucination. Instead of hearing voices, I was hearing only one voice. I knew it wasn't real. I still wanted to clap my hands over my ears, even though I knew it wouldn't help. I tried to keep my focus on Mr. Gates, but my eyes were drawn to Duncan. I turned to see him glaring at me. Stay out of my head, Susanna. My eyes widened. He hadn't spoken aloud, yet I had heard him, and he knew it. Am I really hearing your thoughts? I spoke the words in my mind. I told you to drop the innocent act. Duncan shot back at me. I see right through you. Anger sparked within me. I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't done anything to you. Duncan smiled thinly. And I'm going to keep it that way. Duncan, this is incredible, 
We can talk to each other through our thoughts. How is this possible? I thought I was going crazy. That was impressive, Duncan said. I almost believed that you were really falling apart. I would have taken the bait if I hadn't dealt with your kind before. I stared at him. My kind? Duncan must have realized that we'd held eye contact too long. Other people would think it was weird. He moved his gaze back to Mandy, but his words continued in my mind. This time, I'm going for normal. Then I was left alone with my own thoughts. My mind was reeling from this new discovery. At least now, I was fairly certain that I was still sane. Other than that, my world had been turned upside down. I was startled by the sound of the bell. Duncan and Mandy walked out together as I slowly gathered my books. I was now on autopilot. It was the only way I could make it through the rest of the day. Caitlin watched me with a worried expression on her face as I tried to make small talk. You should eat something. I managed a smile. Since when did you turn into my mother? I'm serious, Caitlin said. When was the last time you ate? I thought about it. Yesterday morning, I had cereal. Caitlin looked at me incredulously. You should be starving by now. I shrugged. I'm just not hungry. Anyway, I've got the scoop. Mandy is totally after Duncan. Caitlin pursed her lips. I ignored her disapproval. I saw it with my own eyes. It was Seduction 101. She's got some killer moves. Caitlin sighed. Oh, Susie, that should be you. Don't give up. There are other fish in the sea. Maybe I'll go comfort Brad. My attempt at being flip fell flat. I had to change the subject. I began to engage Caitlin in conversation about her date with Alex. She realized that this was a good distraction for me. They were going to a movie and we debated which outfit she should wear. Normally, Caitlin drove me home from school. It turned out that she had forgotten about a dentist appointment that afternoon. Her mom was coming to sign her out early. Then Caitlin was driving herself to the dentist. At least my mouth will be extra clean. If Alex doesn't kiss me, I'm going to kiss him. This got a genuine laugh out of me. Caitlin? What? It's our second date, and I'm a modern woman. That you are. I smiled at her affectionately. As the bell rang, she grabbed my arm. We'll talk tomorrow. She gave me a meaningful look. Yes, I said. I promise. As the afternoon wore on, I began to feel seriously lightheaded. The day was almost over, and I had no intention of going to the nurse again. Even taking the bus home was a better option than calling my mom to pick me up sick two days in a row. The last thing I needed was for her to fuss over me all weekend. Caitlin and I would require privacy for what was going to be the biggest talk we'd ever had. It would probably test even Caitlin's open mind. When the last bell rang, I left all my books in my locker. Hopefully, Mr. Gates wouldn't have a pop quiz on Monday. There was no way I was going to be doing any studying this weekend. I followed the throng of students toward the exit doors. I felt like I was walking on the moon. The wall was too far away, and there was nothing to hold on to. My head was spinning as I began to sway on my feet. No, I thought as I lost my balance. Someone steadied me. He felt solid and strong. I leaned against him. Can you make it? I heard his voice. I thought maybe he had spoken aloud this time. Yes, I said weakly. I have to get to bus C. He helped me outside and lowered me onto a bench. Wait here. I tried to get up after he left, but I sank back down. He pulled up in a gray car. I leaned on him as he led me to the passenger seat. By this time, I was starting to feel a little stronger. I caught my breath as Duncan leaned over me to fasten my seatbelt. He stilled, and his gaze captured mine. An expression I couldn't name flitted across his face. Then he pulled away and closed the door. He got into the driver's seat and turned on the ignition. Chestnut Avenue, you said. You'll have to tell me where to turn. Oh, I said. You don't have to drive me. I'll take the bus. The bus is gone, Duncan said, as he put the car in drive. I'll take you home. Thanks. I'm sorry to be so much trouble. Duncan's jaw clenched. He stared straight ahead at the road. 
Is that why you've gone to such great lengths to play the damsel in distress? What do you mean? I got dizzy. I didn't even know you were there. You called me. Duncan's voice cut like a knife. I did not, I said indignantly. I don't even have your number. Damn it, Susanna. Duncan exploded. You know what I mean. I gaped at him with my mouth open. Called him? His pale blue eyes slid toward me. He laughed derisively. Another Academy Award-worthy performance. You called me to make sure I would be there to rescue you. That was no pretend fainting spell, though. What'd you do? Not eat for a while? I was sick. I couldn't eat anything. I watched his hands gripping the steering wheel. I don't know why you think I'm lying to you, and I don't know why you're saying those things, but I never called you. I would have remembered that. It was your voice, Duncan said. I'd know it anywhere. He drove in silence then, as I gave him the directions to my house. I felt much better, but he insisted on walking me to my door. I thanked him for the ride. Don't do this again, Susanna. I mean it. He strode to his car and drove off. I went to my room and got into bed. Weariness overtook me, and I fell into a dreamless sleep. Chapter 4 I woke up early on Saturday, having slept straight through after school the day before. I was finally hungry, so I decided to make pancakes. My stomach rumbled while I cooked them. I was finishing a second helping when Mom and Dad walked into the kitchen. Hey, sleepyhead, Dad said. Those three days of school really wore you out, huh? Mom beamed at me. I'm so glad that you're feeling better. I tried to wake you for dinner, but you were dead to the world. I was planning to take you to the doctor today. This was what I had been afraid of yesterday. I smiled back at them. I guess I just needed some extra sleep. Better help yourself to some pancakes before I eat them all. After breakfast, the three of us did housework. Caitlin called after lunch. She came over just as my parents were getting ready to go to a movie. It was perfect timing, since we would now be able to talk in private. Alone at last, Caitlin joked. We both laughed. Do you want something to drink? No, Caitlin said. I want to hear about these secrets you've been keeping from me. I hesitated. First, how was your date with Alex? He enjoyed my clean mouth, Caitlin said without missing a beat. We'll get back to that later. Quit stalling. I can't wait another minute to hear about you and Duncan. Okay, I said. Okay, you already know about the dream. It gets more bizarre from there. I told her about what had happened the day I went home sick. Once I began talking, the words just poured out of me. Caitlin listened in rapt attention. When I got to the part about Duncan and I being able to communicate with our thoughts, she couldn't contain herself any longer. Oh. My. God! What did I tell you? What more proof do you need that you guys are soulmates? I was amazed. You are taking this a lot better than I did, and way better than Duncan did. I filled her in on the rest of the story. Duncan was less than thrilled about our special connection. In fact, he was downright hostile about it. This can only mean one thing, Caitlin said. He's been hurt by another girl who has this ability. That boy is seriously bitter. That's why he's trying to push you away. I was surprised by how jealous I was at the thought of another girl sharing this bond with Duncan. Do you really think that's possible? Caitlin gave me a funny look. Anything is possible. You should know that better than anyone. That would explain his attitude. She must have broken his heart. You've got to win his trust, Caitlin said. Yeah, right. That's not going to happen. His mind is made up. We'll convince him. What do you mean, we? Caitlin, I said sternly. Stay out of it. Okay, Caitlin said. We'll see. She had been so great about believing my crazy story that I didn't want to argue with her. I changed the subject to her date with Alex, and this time, she let me. The movie had been okay. The kissing afterwards had been great. And they were going out to dinner this evening. Caitlin left shortly after my parents arrived home. She and Alex seemed to have really hit it off, and I was happy for her. After dinner, I decided to go for a walk. Since I had been sick, 
I had missed being outside. It felt good to be out in the fresh air again. A gentle breeze made the weather perfect. Many people were enjoying the park. I felt much better now that I had told Caitlin everything. I wasn't alone in this anymore. Caitlin's idea about the other girl made sense. It wasn't fair that Duncan was taking it out on me, but there was nothing I could do about it. The best thing for me would be to try to avoid him as much as possible and move on with my life. Caitlin was wrong. We weren't soulmates. If she was right about the other girl, even our connection wasn't unique. He had already experienced it with someone else. On top of that, even without his irrational hostility toward me, there was no way I could compete against Mandy. I resolved to have a brand new attitude on Monday. Duncan wasn't even going to be on my radar. A little girl approached me and asked me to play tag with her. Lily, her mother admonished her from a nearby bench where she was feeding a baby. Leave that girl alone. I don't mind, I winked at the mother. I was just hoping that somebody would play tag with me. We ran around and giggled. I pretended that I couldn't run fast enough to get away from her. Her delight was infectious. You're it! We zigzagged as I kept just barely missing her. You can't catch me! She taunted with little kid glee. Oh, you're too fast! I said as I made a show of stopping to catch my breath. As I looked up, I noticed Duncan in the background. He was watching me. I just barely caught the smile on his face before it quickly disappeared. Come on, let's play. The little girl was tugging on my arm. It's time to go home now, Lily, her mother called as she was putting the baby into the stroller. No, Lily wailed. I want to play more tag. Next time, I soothed. Whew, you wore me out. Lily's mother had to come and take her by the hand. Let's go. You can help me push the stroller. She smiled at me. Thanks. Hopefully she'll be too tired to put up a fuss at bedtime tonight. Duncan wandered over as they left. You've made a quick recovery. I went to sleep as soon as you left, and I didn't get up until this morning. Then I ate two breakfasts. The smile I had glimpsed earlier ghosted over Duncan's lips again. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thanks, I said. And thanks again for helping me yesterday. May I ask you a question? Duncan was immediately wary. What is it? I hated to broach the subject, but it was gnawing at me. You said that I called you. You did, Duncan said. And that's not a question. Where were you when it happened? Don't we have to be close by to hear each other? As if you didn't know, Duncan said. Okay, I'll humor you. Our ears have nothing to do with it. We connect telepathically. Hypothetically, we could be anywhere. This was a lot to take in. You mean, we could even hear each other if we were in different cities? Duncan got a faraway look on his face. Hypothetically. Wow, I said. Then why don't we hear each other all the time? Duncan rolled his eyes. As you well know, there are mental barriers. When both people are open to it, the barriers are withdrawn. In times of heightened emotions, some thoughts seep out, so to speak. Also, if one is very powerful, the barriers are more easily breached. Even then, reading someone's thoughts all the time would be exhausting. Don't look at me like that, I said. I wasn't tired from reading your thoughts. I can't even control when it happens. I never knew that such a thing was possible until I met you. Oh, please, he said. Do you really expect me to believe that you just spontaneously manifested an ability that takes years to hone? That you got past the barriers in my mind without even trying? Whether you believe it or not, it's true. You apparently got past the barriers in my mind, too, I challenged. No, he said. I didn't. Yours are airtight. You must be very powerful. I can't even get a glimpse of your real thoughts. These are my real thoughts, I said in exasperation. My life was completely ordinary until I had that dream about you. What dream? Never mind, I said. I have to get home. I tried not to think about it, but it came unbidden into my mind in vivid detail. That wild kiss with the dream Duncan. 
I began to walk away quickly. I wasn't sure how this worked. Could he only hear my thoughts, or might he also be able to see the images in my mind? He'd pretty much said that he'd had years of practice at this. Duncan followed me. He grabbed me and spun me around, his eyes searching mine. Are these your real thoughts? He asked softly. Are they, Susanna? My breathing became labored. His lips hovered just above mine, tantalizingly close. His pale eyes had darkened slightly. He was going to kiss me, and an almost unbearable excitement coursed through me. I won't be fooled again, Duncan said. Then he walked away. Chapter 5 I stared at myself in the mirror on Monday with a fierce determination to move on with my life. I had felt like a fool for thinking that Duncan was going to kiss me. My dream had brought on an infatuation with him, but it was over now. I squared my shoulders and went downstairs for breakfast. Dad's mouth dropped open. He stared at me as if he had never seen me before. Oh, Mom gushed. You look adorable in that color. Dad found his voice. That's not the word I was going for. Are you sure that's appropriate for school? It's fine, Mom said. She looks lovely and feminine. Caitlin had declared this look to be sexy sweet. She had been thrilled when I had asked her to go shopping with me and change my image. I was wearing a pink mini dress with a cinched waist and flared skirt. Dad continued to protest. I thought that you just bought school clothes. How many outfits do you need? Don't worry, Dad. I paid for it with my babysitting money. Calm down, Jim, Mom said. Susie is smart and responsible. What are you worried about? Don't you remember that I wore miniskirts when you met me? Dad looked like he was going to say something, but changed his mind. With Mom on board, he realized that arguing further was futile. I told myself that I wasn't nervous. I just wasn't hungry. I applied lip gloss and took one final look in the mirror before Caitlin arrived. Wait until Duncan sees you. Caitlin admired her handiwork. You're going to give Mandy a run for her money. This is not about Duncan. I'm doing this for myself. You go, girl, Caitlin said. Don't mock me, I snapped at her. What? I believe in girl power. You need to relax. There's no reason to be nervous. You look great. All too soon, we had arrived at school. As we walked to our lockers, I noticed that more guys than usual said hi to me. Even Brad. I couldn't remember him ever speaking to me before. Smile, Caitlin said. The clothes are only one part of changing your image. You can't be looking at the floor all the time. I opened my mouth to argue, then closed it. I had asked for her help, and I needed to listen to her advice. It worked, too. I found that when I smiled at people, they usually smiled back. I began to feel more confident. My nervousness only returned when I was walking toward English. I braced myself for seeing Duncan. Stop it, I told myself. He's just another guy who cares what he thinks. I pointedly ignored him as I took my seat. I could feel his eyes lingering on me, and I was angry at myself for being so aware of him. I must say, Susanna, you look like sugar and spice and everything nice. What's the occasion? Is it your birthday? No, that's September 21st. Stop reading my mind, I told him, and stop talking to me in my thoughts. How do we put up those mental barriers you were talking about? Duncan continued our silent conversation after class began. Why do you continue to be ignorant of your powers? I've made it clear that I'm on to you. And I've made it clear that this is all new to me. Furthermore, if you have something to say, then speak out loud like a normal person from now on. Or better yet, don't speak to me at all. I'm going back to my regular life, and you're not a part of it. I see, Duncan said. Throwing yourself at me didn't work, so now you're playing hard to get. Throwing myself? I fumed. You're unbelievable. I'm not even interested in you. Really? You gave me a different impression on Saturday. That was just a stupid dream. It doesn't mean anything. I would appreciate it if you would just forget about the whole thing. I wished that I could keep from blushing. 
then you shouldn't have put that image in my mind. An image, I said, momentarily forgetting that I was annoyed with him. You mean that you could actually see it, instead of just hearing my thoughts? How does that work? Duncan studied me. Do you really want to play this game with me? I thought that you wanted to put an end to this. Yes, I do. Let's just pay attention to the teacher. He complied, and this time I could feel a break in our connection. I somehow knew that he was no longer listening to my thoughts. Hopefully, this had been the last time. Communicating that way was much too intimate. By the end of the day, I felt good about the progress I had made with my more outgoing image. I put my books away in my locker. Out of nowhere, an image came into my mind. Duncan was there, leaning over me with my back pressed up against the locker. His hand came up to caress my cheek, then his lips descended upon mine in a kiss that took my breath away. I stood there with my hand still on my locker the way it had been when I closed the door. My breathing was shallow. I tried to remember what I was supposed to be doing. That's how it works, Duncan whispered in my ear. My temperature soared as I turned around in expectation. He wasn't behind me. I spotted him all the way down the hall, our eyes locked. Does that answer your question? Caitlin came up beside me and broke the spell. Ready to go? Oh, Susie, you look flushed. She put a hand up to my forehead. You feel hot. Are you sick again? I'm fine, I muttered. I saw Duncan's amused expression. I marched up to him with Caitlin following me. I told you to stop that. I was just answering your question, Duncan replied smoothly. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? I continued to glare at him. So rude, he said. He turned toward Caitlin. I'm Duncan. She took the hand he offered her. I'm Caitlin. It's nice to finally meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Duncan smiled warmly at her. It's great how you guys have that mind thing going on. Caitlin! I was aghast. Luckily, Mandy showed up then and prevented Caitlin from saying something even worse. Duncan was apparently driving Mandy home. As he left with her, he had a parting shot for me. Now we're even, he said, in a way only I could hear. Chapter 6 Just think about the possibilities. Every time you get bored in class, you can just go kiss Duncan. Caitlin couldn't stop marveling over this new development. I was beginning to regret telling her about the trick Duncan had pulled on me yesterday. I wouldn't really be kissing him. You said it felt real. It's way better than daydreaming, and it's not like he minds. No, I said. He was just messing with me. Because he likes you. He has a girlfriend, I reminded her. Now Caitlin looked uncomfortable. Normally, I wouldn't agree with going after another girl's guy, but you two belong together. No, I said with finality. We don't. He accused me of throwing myself at him when I did no such thing. I already decided to forget about him even before Brad asked me out. That's actually a great idea, Caitlin said. Make him jealous. Caitlin, I said in frustration. Get it through your head. This is not about Duncan. Remember how many times you encouraged my impossible crush on Brad? It's finally happening. I thought you'd be happy for me. Your plan for changing my image worked. I guess, she said without enthusiasm. It's just that you have so much in common with Duncan. That reminds me. Why didn't you tell me that he lives on my street? Oh yeah. I said. With everything that's been going on, I forgot all about it. I am telling you, Susie, he's interested in you. Sure, he told me all about California. He says he likes it here better because it's peaceful. Can you believe that? I'm thinking it has more to do with you. He wanted to know all about you. He did. I couldn't help being curious about this. Like what? He asked me how long I've known you. He wanted to know how long I've known about your abilities. We talked about your dream. He was especially interested in your reaction. How you went into shock the first time you saw him. That was okay, right? I mean, he already knew about the dream. That's okay, I said. He saw the dream for himself. Can't get any more embarrassing than that. Susie, 
You're not looking at this the right way at all, Caitlin began. No, I cut in. I need you to stop this. I'm going out with Brad this weekend. Duncan is dating Mandy. End of story. Okay, Caitlin relented. We'll just see how it all plays out. I left it at that. Things were getting back to normal. No more dreams about Duncan, and no more reading minds. I would focus on school and my date with Brad. I actually paid attention in English class the next day. Cancel your date with Brad. I refused to look at Duncan. I told you to stop talking to me this way. Do you really want the whole class to know your business? I kept my eyes on the teacher. I don't even want you to know my business. He's not appropriate for you, Duncan said. Pick someone else. Now I did look at him. Excuse me? You don't even know him. I know his type, Duncan said. Just like you know my type, I challenged. Make up your mind. Either I'm conniving or I'm not. You're not really interested in him, he said without answering my question. You know, I said, you keep saying that you want me to stay away from you, but when I do, you don't like it. How do you even know about Brad asking me out? Caitlin told me. It's great how you guys have become such good friends, I said with false sweetness. I was really annoyed now. Despite everything I had said, Caitlin still thought that this was some elaborate plan to make Duncan jealous. You can't get from him what you want from me. My cheeks burned. How dare you? Oh, Susanna, Duncan said. As tempting as that thought is, you know that's not what I meant. I have no idea what you mean, and at this point, I don't really care. I'm tired of your cryptic accusations. Look, Susanna, he began. Enough! With the force of my thoughts, I suddenly slammed a barrier between us. I could feel his thoughts fluttering against it like butterflies. With a firm resolve, I turned my attention back to the teacher. When class ended, I left without even glancing at Duncan. At the end of the day, he was waiting for me by my locker. Caitlin said to meet her at her car and made a hasty exit. Since he couldn't get past my barrier, Duncan had to resort to actual speech. So, you don't know how barriers work, do you? You must be one hell of a fast learner. Are you going to admit now that I was right about you all along? No, I said with rising anger. I'm not. I don't know what your problem is. I'm sorry if your ex-girlfriend broke your heart, but that has nothing to do with me. What do you know about my ex-girlfriend? Duncan was almost shouting at me. I know that if you weren't such a jerk, maybe she wouldn't have dumped you. There was a dead silence. He looked as if I had slapped him. Maybe he said quietly. I tried to probe his mind. Something ugly was seeping out toward me, and I shrank back from it in revulsion. That's right, Susanna, Duncan said. It's none of your business, and you're none of my business. I won't bother you again. Chapter 7 Watching the movie was proving to be difficult. The problem wasn't with the movie, since I actually liked action movies. Brad kept breaking my concentration. I had to keep removing his hand from my knee, or averting my face from his attempts to kiss me. Shortly into the movie, he had casually draped his arm around my shoulders and tried to feel me up. I had never met anyone so persistent. I was relieved when the credits rolled. Brad saw some of his friends in the lobby, and they quickly decided that we were all going out for burgers. I thought about asking Brad to drop me off at home. My rejection of his advances hadn't dampened his spirits at all, and he chattered about his friends during the drive to the restaurant. Thankfully, he kept his hands on the wheel. We all piled into a large booth. This seemed to be their regular hangout, since the waitress knew them. Brad ordered a burger and fries while I just got a shake. I felt out of place in this group, most of whom were jocks and cheerleaders. Brad introduced them to me and they seemed friendly enough. I mostly just listened to them talk comfortably to each other. The guys kidded each other and laughed at what they thought were hilarious jokes. It gave me a chance to watch Brad, and I was struck again by his blonde good looks. No wonder I'd had a crush on him for so long. Before we left, one of the girls invited us to a party at her house later in the month. I realized that this group accepted me because I was with Brad, 
I had never been invited to hang out with the popular crowd before. Brad surprised me by apologizing to me. Sorry if I came on too strong at the movie. It's just that you're so pretty, and I've been lonely. I felt like telling him that he hadn't been alone for very long, but I held my tongue. I found myself saying that it was okay. For some reason, after we arrived in my driveway, I completely let him off the hook by telling him that I'd had a nice time. Me too, he said, as he leaned in to give me a kiss. This time, I didn't stop him. I could sense that he was treading carefully, testing my reaction. I pulled back before he could deepen the kiss. Brad's smile accentuated his dimples. You're kind of shy, aren't you? That's okay. It's only the first date. Good night, Susie. Good night, Brad. I got out of the car and began walking up the driveway. I heard his car pull away before I had even reached the front door. My mind flashed back to Duncan walking me to my door, even though he had been inexplicably angry with me. Stop being ridiculous, I told myself. It's the modern world, and there is no reason that a boy needs to walk you to your door. There was also no reason to compare Brad's kiss to my kisses with Duncan, which weren't even real kisses. I resolutely put Duncan out of my mind as I said goodnight to my parents. As I got ready for bed, I couldn't help thinking that I wasn't as thrilled as I should have been after finally going out with Brad. Caitlin called me on it the next day. Now, take it from the top with even less enthusiasm. I had just finished telling her about my date with Brad while we were sprawled out in her room. I had walked to her house since her car was in the shop because it needed new brakes. Okay, I said. Granted, it could have gone better. I'm surprised that Mandy didn't dump him a long time ago. Caitlin said. Prince Charming, he is not. Maybe you should find a different way to make Duncan jealous. I rolled over and sat up in agitation. How many times do I have to tell you that this isn't about Duncan? Brad apologized. Everyone deserves a second chance. That's not always true. Susie, sometimes you're too nice. But if you're going to continue this, then you might as well use it to your advantage. I've got a great idea. Think about your kiss with Brad in English class, where Duncan can hear your thoughts. Only, you have to add more excitement to it. It's like talking to a wall, I complained. You act like you haven't heard a word I've said. Okay, okay, Caitlin relented. I'll change the subject. Tyler said to tell you hi. He asked if you're still saving yourself for him. He's so gross. I told him that he's old news. Tyler, Caitlin's older brother, was away for his first year of college. He had been my first crush, and Caitlin had declared this to be temporary insanity. Tyler now teased me about it every chance he got. The nut told me to break a leg. I told him that's good luck for the show, not the audition. I can't believe they still make you audition, I said. You always get the part. They have to give everyone the same chance. Besides, it's good practice for Hollywood. If you want to wait, Mom said she'll give you a ride home after school tomorrow. Thanks, I said. I'll just take the bus. I'd like to get in a walk before dinner. I think they said it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Anyway, we'll figure it out at school. I stayed for dinner at Caitlin's house and then walked home. She'd insisted on showing me which house Duncan lived in. I could tell she was disappointed that he wasn't out to see me. The next day, I woke with a bad feeling. I dragged my feet getting ready until mom yelled that I was going to be late for the bus. I made it to the stop just as the bus was pulling up. The sky was cloudy, and I regretted not taking a jacket with me. It definitely looked like it would rain today. Maybe that was why I was in this somber mood. I thought it would go away once I got to school, but I couldn't seem to shake it. In fact, it seemed to be getting worse as the day progressed. Even being treated like one of the in-crowd by Brad and his friends didn't lift my spirits. What's wrong with you? Duncan asked, as soon as I took my seat in English. Hello to you too, I said. Listen, I'm really not in the mood to deal with you today. Duncan lowered his voice. Did Brad do something? Of course not, I denied, but I felt a telltale blush creep over my cheeks. Duncan switched to speaking with his thoughts. Don't lie to me, Susanna. I've had this feeling all day. If that creep... Suddenly, his voice disappeared as vivid images flooded my mind. Duncan was kissing Mandy while they were in his car at night. 
Her hand found its way under his shirt, and she ran it over his chest. Then it began to descend lower. With great effort, I managed to put my barrier up against the assault of Mandy's thoughts. Duncan had said that powerful emotions would sometimes allow us to read other people's thoughts. Mandy's desire for Duncan was off the charts. I was now holding off her thoughts, but my imagination took the situation to its natural conclusion. No, Susanna, that's not what happened. I told you to stay out of my head. How'd you get past my barrier anyway? Powerful emotions, Duncan said. You're very upset. I'm not upset. I don't care what you do, I just don't want a front row seat. He went on as if I hadn't spoken. That still doesn't explain why I'm able to project thoughts past your barrier. Something is definitely off with you today. And it remained that way. Caitlin repeated her mother's offer to drive me home after Caitlin's audition for the play, but I just wanted to get home as soon as possible. By the end of the day, my feeling of unease was verging on dread. Duncan approached me as I was getting the books I needed for homework out of my locker. Mandy trailed behind him. Amazingly, he was there to offer me a ride. I looked at him as if he had grown another head. There was no way that I wanted to get in the car with him and Mandy, especially after what had happened in English. Thanks, I said. It's nice of you to offer, but I'm taking the bus. We'll walk with you, he said, ignoring Mandy's puzzled look. I didn't know what to say to that, so we walked in awkward silence. As we approached the row of buses, I turned to say goodbye to them. Mandy stopped walking and said bye back to me, but Duncan followed me to my bus. See you tomorrow, I said. The words snagged in my mind, and I couldn't figure out why they had seemed to come out wrong. See you tomorrow, Duncan repeated. Then he frowned. I made my way onto the bus and took a seat by the window. Duncan was still standing outside, and the look on his face mirrored the immense relief I had felt as soon as I stepped on the bus. He smiled and waved by. I returned the smile and waved back. I watched him walk back to Mandy. He said something to her, and they walked away hand in hand. The bus began to move as I shot out of my seat. The driver noticed me when I reached the front, and she told me to sit down. Please, I said. Can you let me out? I forgot that my mom is picking me up. The driver grumbled, but she stopped the bus and opened the door. The opening seemed to yawn before me ominously. Against my better judgment, I stepped out into the increasingly gray day. My thoughts were roiling through my head like a witch's brew in a cauldron. Duncan was off doing adult things, yet he was treating me like a child walking me to the bus like I was in kindergarten. The nerve of him! Yet, now I was faced with the choice of waiting for Caitlin or walking home. I scanned the sky anxiously, trying to figure out if I could beat the storm home. A little rain never hurt anyone, I told myself. I decided that I was too restless to wait around, and a nice long walk was just the thing I needed. Still, my legs felt like lead as I began walking away from the school. Everything in me screamed to turn back, but I stubbornly trudged on anyway. I was about halfway home when I began to hear thunder, which was steadily getting closer. By this time, I was regretting my impulsive decision to get off the bus. There was no way that I was going to make it home before the storm broke. I would probably get completely drenched. It would be a miserable end to a miserable day. I was in a residential area, so there weren't even any stores where I could take shelter. Lightning began to flash over the sky, and I gazed at it in awe. Despite the situation I was in, I still found storms fascinating. As I walked on, however, something seemed to change in the atmosphere. My blood hummed with an awareness of the power of the storm. It now became frightening. Every time I heard the next loud clap of thunder, I nearly jumped out of my skin. I tripped and almost fell. I looked down to see that my shoelace was untied. All I needed was to get hurt and have to limp home in a downpour. I quickly crouched down to tie my shoe. After that, there are jumbled images in my mind. I'm not sure how to put them in order. There's the sound of screeching brakes, me coming out of my crouch and not making it all the way to standing at my full height before a body slammed into me 
and knocked me breathless onto someone's lawn. A blinding flash of light, a shockingly loud crack of thunder, anxious pale blue eyes peering at me through my daze. Then, as my mind came back into focus, the shock of realizing that I had nearly been killed, I knew with sudden certainty that lightning had struck the spot where I had been standing. As I stared at Duncan with growing horror, heavy sheets of rain began to pelt us. Chapter 8 Are you okay? Duncan shouted. Can you stand up? I could barely see him as I squinted through the rain. How did you... Duncan stood up and leaned down to put his arms around me. Hold on to me, Susanna. I'll help you up. My legs easily held me. Duncan kept his arm around my waist as we walked toward his car. It was in the middle of the street, with the driver door wide open. He opened the passenger door, and I gratefully got in out of the rain. The keys were still in the ignition, with the engine running. The driver's side was wet from the rain. Not that it mattered, because both Duncan and I were dripping wet. Duncan's black hair was plastered to his head, while mine hung heavy against my back. He began to drive. The rain had lessened enough for the windshield wipers to be able to keep up with its steady rhythm. How did you know that was going to happen? I had a sense of deja vu as I asked that question. I didn't, Duncan said. I just knew that I had to get to you. But how did you know where I was? I pushed my dripping hair off my forehead. I don't know. I panicked and got in the car. Then I just drove to where you were. I was so concerned with getting to you in time that I didn't even think about how to find you. Somehow, I just did. He turned into a driveway and stopped the car. I noticed that we weren't at my house. What are you doing? I need to go home and change. You shouldn't be alone right now. You've had a shock. I'm sure my mom will let you borrow something of hers. I had no chance but to follow Duncan into his house. His mom met us at the door. Duncan! I've been worried sick. You took off in such a rush with no explanation. My God, look at the two of you. You're soaking wet. I'm sorry, Mom. There was no time. This is Susanna. Well, of course it is. She's exactly as you described her. Come now, Susanna. Let's find you something dry to put on. Then I'll make you some tea to warm you up. She led me to her bedroom and found some clothes for me. I had to use a belt to hold up the pants but it was a relief to get out of my wet clothes. Mrs. McKenna waited in the hallway until I was done. She insisted on taking my wet clothes to throw in the dryer. They should be dry by the time you're done with your tea. She smiled at me. Duncan had apparently inherited his eyes from her. They were the exact same shade of palest blue. Duncan joined us in the kitchen. He had changed into dry clothes, too. I suddenly remembered that he had saved my life. Thank you. I told him silently. None of that, Mrs. McKenna said. There's no need for secrets here. I turned to her in surprise and spoke aloud. You could hear that? Strong emotions, Susanna. You two are both overwhelmed with them. I wasn't trying to eavesdrop. Mom, Susanna just barely escaped being struck by lightning. You too. It had suddenly dawned on me. Duncan, you could have been hit too when you were pushing me out of the way. Oh my God, Mrs. McKenna exclaimed, but Duncan and I were looking at each other. Duncan cleared his throat. <clears> that reminds me, why did you get off the bus? I looked away. I just felt like walking. In a storm? I thought I could beat it home. His mom intervened. You've both had a close call. You need to try to calm down. The tea will be done in a minute. Mom thinks tea cures everything, Duncan teased. It's soothing, at least. I'm in a state myself. When I think about you being in danger, thank God you're okay. It was amazing how comfortable Duncan's mom made me feel. I could tell that she and Duncan were very close. He was relaxed around her. Within a short time, I felt all the tension of the day drain out of me as I drank tea with them. So, you can read minds, too. This fascinated me. I had thought that Duncan's parents weren't aware of his ability. Mine wouldn't believe such a thing was possible. Yes, Mrs. McKenna said. Duncan's father could, too. 
could. Maybe it would disappear as suddenly as it appeared, I hope. Dad died four years ago, Duncan explained. Oh, I'm sorry. I felt terrible for Duncan. I couldn't imagine losing my dad. Thank you, Mrs. McKenna said. Duncan told me that you weren't aware of your ability until recently. Yes, I didn't even know it was possible. I couldn't believe it at first. You're the only two people I've ever met who could do this. Mrs. McKenna warmed to her subject. There is a theory that everyone has this ability. Some of us are just more easily able to access it. Our brains make the connections more readily. It's just like being good at math. Those who are tend to show an aptitude at an early age. Perhaps you just didn't know that you were hearing other people's thoughts. Your parents might have made you believe that it was all in your imagination. I shook my head. No, there was nothing like that. I never even had an imaginary friend. I've always been ordinary, until now. You're not ordinary, Susanna, Duncan said. Then he stood up abruptly and began to clear our empty cups from the table. I should get you home. Your parents will be home soon. Mrs. McKenna stood up too. I'll check if your clothes are dry. I got up and walked over to where Duncan was standing by the sink. I want to thank you again for saving my life. I'm just glad that you're okay, he said. I'm glad that you're okay too. We both smiled. It was nice to finally have this peaceful, easy feeling between us. His mom returned my clothes. They were dry, and I went back to her bedroom to put them on. The rain had stopped, but there were puddles everywhere. I was seized with the childish urge to splash in them. I resisted since I didn't want to add more water to the interior of Duncan's car. Everything seemed perfect now. It was wonderful to be alive. Hey, Susie! Caitlin was avoiding the puddles as she made her way up the sidewalk toward us. Hi, Duncan. Hi, Caitlin. I was just about to drive Susanna home. Actually, she's going to have dinner at my house. Mom will drive her home. Caitlin was beyond thrilled to find me at Duncan's house. Even Duncan was wise to it. Yes, you girls have a lot to talk about. Okay, then. Have a good night. You too, we both replied. I called Mom to let her know I was at Caitlin's house. Caitlin had the frustration of actually having to wait through dinner before she could find out how I had ended up at Duncan's house. She kept giving me hurry-up looks as I was eating. Then we went up to her room on the pretext of studying. I had expected her to ask a million questions, but she only gasped and stared at me wide-eyed while I related the events of the afternoon. After I was finished, she sat in stunned silence. I looked at the clock. I really should get going now. Thanks for dinner. Caitlin grabbed my arm. Susie, she said slowly. Why did you do that? I looked at her blankly. Do what? She was more agitated than I had ever seen her. Why did you go out into the storm when you knew what was going to happen? How could I know? Duncan was the one who knew. No, she continued stubbornly. You knew too. Why do you think that? Because, Caitlin burst out, you knew about me. Knew what about you? Caitlin, you're not making any sense. Look, Susie, I know you don't like to talk about it. I've respected that all these years, but this is important. Ignoring this thing almost got you killed today. I stared at her. What are you talking about? I'm completely lost here. She stared back at me. Are you serious? You really don't know what I'm talking about? No, I said helplessly. I really don't. Wow. Caitlin began to pace back and forth. Okay. She stopped in front of me again. Do you remember how we became friends? Sure, I said. You started talking to me in second grade. No, Caitlin denied. You started talking to me first. You came up to me on the playground one day out of the blue. You grabbed my hand and told me not to go on the bus with my parents. A chill went through me. I did? I whispered. She went on with a nod. I'll never forget it. You were talking to me, but
but your eyes weren't focused on me. It seemed like you were looking somewhere far away. You repeated it again. Don't go on the bus with your mom and dad or you'll die. I was totally spooked. You know the rest. I did. It was legend in Caitlin's family. Her parents had still been together back then. They had planned a trip to visit her grandma in West Virginia. That morning, they couldn't find Caitlin anywhere. Frantic, they had called the police. By the time they found her, they had missed the bus. She had snuck out of the house early that morning and hidden a tree in the park. She had refused to tell them why. I knew that the bus had tragically gone over a cliff. There were no survivors. Caitlin's mom had often talked about how Caitlin had saved all their lives by hiding in that tree. I didn't remember the other part of it at all. We never talked about it. I figured you wanted to keep it a secret since you never said anything. For a long time, I was convinced that you were my guardian angel. I stuck close to you after that. You made me feel safe. I gaped at Caitlin. Are you making this up? Why would I make it up? Are you telling me that you really don't remember? You saved my life and just forgot about it? Chapter 9 I had forgotten about it. Caitlin's astonishing revelation about my childhood prediction had not caused any long-buried memories to surface. Surprisingly, the events of the day didn't keep me awake that night. I fell soundly asleep and woke up refreshed and happy. My parents, who were unaware that I had nearly been killed the day before, didn't know what to make of my spontaneous hugs and I love yous. They shared amused smiles. Someone got up on the right side of the bed today, Dad said. Remember which side it is and get up on that side every day. I hate to break it to you, Mom said, but this kind of sunny mood usually involves a boy. Why do you have to spoil it? Dad wailed. Why can't you let me live in blissful ignorance? Mom, not everything is about boys. Can't I just be in a good mood? I'm sorry, Susie. From now on, I will bask in your good cheer without questioning the source. As I watched them laugh and joke, I thought for a fleeting moment how different the scene would be now if I had never made it home yesterday. My mind refused to linger there, because it was impossible to imagine myself really not being here. Of course I was having breakfast with my parents, like I always did. Of course I was getting ready for school, like usual. I was even happy to go to school. Caitlin had gotten her car back from the shop after school yesterday, so she picked me up. Her dad had bought her the car for her 16th birthday. I had been impressed by such an expensive present but Caitlin had shrugged it off as guilt money. Her dad was a workaholic who didn't see his kids very often. Caitlin's attitude was that she might as well take advantage of the situation, but I knew it bothered her. Feels good to be alive, doesn't it? Caitlin acknowledged my great mood. A look of understanding passed between us. Then we were back to lighthearted chatter. Brad spotted me in the hallway at school and came bounding up to me. Caitlin rolled her eyes at me and took off. Hey, babe. Brad leaned in for a kiss. I kissed him back briefly. Public displays still made me uncomfortable. Brad's popularity ensured that people noticed and gossiped about these things. You know, babe, the girls like you. You don't have to hang out with that weird girl anymore. Brad had a look of distaste when he said this last part. Annoyance marred my good mood. She is not weird. Her name is Caitlin and she's my best friend. The warning bell cut my tirade short. Later, babe. Brad walked off without a backward glance. My name isn't babe, either, I muttered. Deciding not to dwell on it, I made my way to class. My good spirits quickly returned. English class made my day even better, because Duncan's warm attitude toward me had not abated. It was wonderful to see his open smile instead of the guarded gaze that had so often greeted me. How are you today, Susanna? Alive, I said with simple gratitude. We fell into a comfortable silence. I didn't try to read his thoughts, but his presence beside me was hard to ignore. He seemed to be suffused with a radiant energy. After a while, I broke my own rule and spoke to him with my thoughts. 
happy much? Though I wasn't looking at him, I could practically feel his smile. You started it. I barely had time to open my eyes this morning before I was overwhelmed by your wave of happiness. Are you serious? You could sense my good mood all the way at your house? I sneaked a peek at his face to see if he was kidding. Duncan's gaze was clear and steady. It's more than a good mood, Susanna. You were feeling joy, and that's an emotion I haven't experienced in a long time. Thanks for giving me that. I had to look away suddenly. I didn't do anything. I didn't even know that you could sense how I was feeling. I know, he said. Ever since I found out about your abilities, I thought that you were projecting false emotions to manipulate me. I couldn't believe that you were really as sweet as you seemed to be. I've been terrible to you, and I want to apologize for that. Well, I joked, since you saved my life, I guess I'll forgive you. Maybe. I'm serious, Duncan said. I've been such a jerk to you when you didn't deserve that. I'm sorry. I looked into his pale blue eyes. I'm serious too, Duncan. You're forgiven. His smile reappeared. Good. My smile was just as wide. Good. That's how our relationship changed to a real friendship. That afternoon, Duncan found me in the park and fell into step beside me. I thought you might be here. You never told me how Caitlin took the news about what happened yesterday. I told him the whole story, including Caitlin's chilling disclosure about my foray into child fortune-telling, of which I had no memory. Mom was right, Duncan mused. Your abilities manifested early. They must have been dormant all this time. It's amazing how strong they are with no practice at developing them and no one to explain to you how to use them. I've never met anyone else like you. His compliments embarrassed me. I changed the focus to him. So your parents taught you how to read minds? No, Duncan corrected. You can't teach someone how to actually do it, only explain how to focus the ability. The mental barrier is the most important part, as you found out yesterday. You don't want to let just anybody's thoughts through. The last was said with a bitterness that made me glance at him sharply. Anyway, he continued in a normal tone. It takes practice and concentration. Except you somehow were able to skip that part. He was back to me again. I asked him questions about his childhood, and he in turn wanted to know about mine. I usually looked forward to my solo walks, but now I didn't mind the company. When we parted ways, I continued to think about everything I had learned about him during our conversation. As the days and weeks passed, our bond grew stronger. Brad and Mandy had football and cheerleading practice, respectively. Caitlin was rehearsing for the school play. She had gotten the part she wanted, to the surprise of no one. Duncan often joined me on my walks in the park. We talked about everything and anything, including our favorite music, books, and movies. He made me laugh with his stories of surfing mishaps in California. I now knew that his mother was an artist who worked at home. By unspoken agreement, we didn't bring up our dating lives. I was still going out with Brad, but I had started to wonder why. Duncan knew me much better than my boyfriend did. During our conversations, I was the one who asked most of the questions and tried to think up topics to talk about. Brad didn't seem too interested in finding out much about me. I hadn't even told him that my birthday was coming up soon. We did the normal things on our dates, like going out to dinner and the movies. We had even gone bowling and played mini-golf. The date of the party we had been invited to was fast approaching. Brad had stayed true to his word about keeping his hands to himself, but he was now increasingly trying to talk me into further than I wanted to. Come on, babe. How long are you going to make me wait? He had breathed in my ear. Duncan interrupted my thoughts. Mom's looking forward to seeing you again. I'm looking forward to seeing her too, I said sincerely. I had agreed to go home with Duncan after school, because his mom had invited me over for tea. Later on, I was going out to dinner with my parents and Caitlin. Mrs. McKenna gave me a hug when she opened the door. Happy birthday, Susanna! Happy birthday, Duncan said. How did you... I began. Oh, why am I even surprised? September 21st, Duncan said. Remember, I found out the day you wore that pink dress to school. 
Mrs. McKenna laughed. You sure made an impression on him in that dress, Susanna. Apparently, you were a vision in pink. It's pretty in pink, Mom. Ha ha, I added in. Very clever, Duncan. There was a chocolate cake on the table. Duncan was a very good listener, because he remembered that chocolate was my favorite. He put one candle in the middle and lit it. Make a wish, Susanna. You shouldn't have gone through all this trouble. It was no trouble, Mrs. McKenna said. Go ahead and make your wish. At that moment, I was at a loss as to what to wish for. I leaned over the cake to blow out the candle and decided to wish that things would stay as perfect as they were right now. Duncan got the plates out while his mom began to cut us each a piece of cake. She also poured tea for all of us. I complimented her on the cake which made Duncan laugh. It came from the store, she said with a mock glare at her son. I'm afraid I'm not much of a baker. Thank you for doing this. It was so thoughtful. You've been so kind to me. You are a sweet girl, Susanna. I'm glad that Duncan has made a good friend here. After we were done with our cake and tea, Duncan excused himself. He returned shortly with a present. This is from both of us. He tried to hand it to me. Oh, I protested. This is too much. The cake was more than enough. Take it, Susanna, Mrs. McKenna insisted. We want you to have it. I took the little box from Duncan and opened it. Inside was a gold necklace with a gold lightning bolt pendant. I was so touched that I could barely speak. How could they know? At first, I had thought about it as the day I was almost killed. Now, when I thought about that day, it was with a sense of wonder at my survival. It was also a reminder of my special bond with Duncan. Are you upset? His voice was filled with concern. If it upsets you, if you don't like it, I love it. I had found my voice. But I can't accept this. It's too much. Nonsense, Mrs. McKenna cut in. It's your birthday, and you should enjoy it. I don't know what to say. Again, thank you so much. I should get you home, Duncan said. You don't want to be late for your own birthday dinner. Duncan, come with us, I said impulsively. I turned to Mrs. McKenna. May Duncan go to dinner with us? Of course, Susanna. It's your day to celebrate. Duncan looked unsure. Are you sure your parents won't mind? They said that I could invite any friends that I wanted to. I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to make a big deal out of it. Now it's too late for that. Besides, my parents would love to meet you. Susanna, Duncan said, don't you get it? Your birthday is a big deal, especially this one. You're alive to see it. Yes, I'll celebrate it with you. Remember, I reminded him when he parked on the street in front of my house. My parents don't know about the lightning strike, and I want to keep it that way. They won't hear about it from me, Duncan assured me. If only I had gotten the same promise from Caitlin. Her eyes zeroed in on the necklace as soon as I came downstairs. She had arrived sometime after I went upstairs to change after introducing Duncan to my parents. Mom had smiled a knowing smile at me. I had decided to wear the pink dress. It wasn't because of what Duncan had said, I told myself. Oh my god, Caitlin shrieked. Where did you get that necklace? Was it a present from Duncan? From Mom and me, Duncan explained. That's beauty. Mom's voice was drowned out by Caitlin. That's kick ass. You're like the girl who lived. Only Duncan is kind of like Harry Potter. Yeah, show him you're not afraid of lightning. Caitlin, Dad said. Have you been drinking? Mom cut to the chase. Why should she be afraid of lightning? Caitlin realized her mistake. Um, I, well, um. Mom wasn't going to let go of this now. Out with it, Susie. What's going on? It was Duncan who spoke up. Susanna was almost struck by lightning a few weeks ago. What? My parents cried out in unison. Duncan pushed me out of the way. I was actually glad to tell them this. Pushed you out of the way? Dad asked. How could he push you out of the way? Nobody knows when lightning is going to strike. Duncan does, Caitlin said. 
He's psychic. It was just a freak thing, Duncan said smoothly. Really, I just happened to stumble into Susanna and knock her down at the right moment. It was pure luck. Caitlin has blown it out of proportion. Whatever. Have it your way. Even as she said this, Caitlin couldn't contain her smile. Susie, how could you keep a thing like that from us? I'm fine, Mom. I just got rained on. Duncan's mom dried my clothes and made me tea. Well, young man, however it happened, you are a hero. Dad put a hand on Duncan's shoulder. I'm glad that you were there to save Susie. Mom was having a delayed reaction. My God, if Susie had been killed... Dad let go of Duncan and embraced Mom. We're not going to think that way. We're going out to celebrate her birthday. He looked over her shoulder at us. You've got the right attitude, kids. Look it in the eye. I walked up to Mom. See, I'm right here. Dad succeeded in making Mom laugh. Look on the bright side. At least Caitlin wasn't drinking. With that, we managed to get Mom out the door. We all piled into Dad's car, with me and Duncan in the back seat, with Caitlin between us, mouthing sorry. As Dad drove to my favorite Italian restaurant, I felt like my wish had already come true. It was a perfect birthday. Chapter 10 Did you know that your dad was going to die? I blurted this out without preamble. The words hung in the air between us, and I wished that I could take them back. Duncan and I were walking in the park, and he had just remarked on the leaves changing color. No. Duncan answered. It was like any other day. Dad went to work and I went to school. He had a massive heart attack. By the time the ambulance arrived, it was already too late. How awful, was all I could say. Mom had to break the news to me. He continued. I couldn't believe it. It didn't seem real. I was kicking myself now. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked you that. It's okay, Duncan said. I don't mind talking about my dad. I've been thinking about him a lot since you almost got hit by lightning. I'm sure now that it was his time to go. My startled gaze met his. You really believe that? Yes, he said. Like I said, it was like any other day at first. Not with you, though. As soon as I woke up, I felt like something was wrong. I nodded in agreement. That's how I felt, too. Susanna. I've never had a premonition before in my life, not even when. Duncan's voice faltered. I waited expectantly for him to continue, but he just kicked the leaves on the path. His suddenly tense mood made me suspect that this had something to do with his ex-girlfriend. I was very curious about her, but he had made it clear that he didn't want to talk about her. I wanted to get the conversation back on track. I've been wondering how you knew where to find me that day. I've been wondering that myself, Duncan said. I don't really know how. It was like I was on autopilot and I didn't have to think. I just drove to where you were. Like that time at school, I mused, when I was starting to faint. You called me that time, he reminded me. This had caused an argument between us in the past, but now we were friends. Yeah, you told me that, but I honestly don't remember doing that. Just like the thing with Caitlin. My guess is that sometimes your abilities just take over without you even realizing it. They are very strong. Who knows what else you can do? I stopped walking. What do you mean, what else I can do? What else is there? Duncan's cell phone rang. Hi, Mom. As he answered it, his smile and raised eyebrows told me that he was remembering our first encounter in the park. Okay, sounds great. I'll be right there. He hung up and widened his eyes at me in mock terror. Mom doesn't want my dinner to get cold. She's all excited about her new recipe. Want to come over for dinner? Sorry, I said, but my parents are expecting me home for dinner too. Chicken? This time I think you're the one who might need to save my life. Oh, stop, I laughed. Don't forget that your mom can read your mind. If she could, she would stop cooking. Anyway. We'll have to finish our talk another time. Gotta go. Bye, Susanna. Bye, Duncan. Enjoy your dinner. I called after him. 
that night before sleep overtook me. I thought about how much my relationship with Duncan had changed in the short time that I had known him. I felt so close to him now. For a brief moment, my dream kiss with him flashed in my mind. Immediately, I willed myself to stop thinking of that. I was happy with the way things were now, and I didn't need to indulge in fantasies. The next day at school, I stopped in the bathroom before English class. When I stepped out of the stall, Mandy and another girl were looking at themselves in the mirror. Mandy applied lipstick while I washed my hands. I struggled to remember the other girl's name. She was the one who had invited me and Brad to her party, yet she was still friends with Mandy. Megan. The name had finally come to me. Mandy and Megan. How cute, I thought. I think Duncan's gay, Mandy announced. No, Megan protested. He's so hot. I stood frozen at the sink, even though I had already finished washing my hands. I know, Mandy said, but we've been going out for a month, and he still hasn't tried to have sex with me. At first, it was sweet, but now it's just weird. That is weird, Megan agreed. Maybe he's religious or something. There might still be hope. Mandy smirked at me knowingly. You sure don't have that problem with Brad. He's always ready to go. I wanted to be anywhere else except where I was at that moment. Grabbing a paper towel, I prepared to flee. Hey, no hard feelings, Mandy assured me. It's not like I was going to marry him. I'm too young to be tied down like that. It was time to move on, you know? The bell spared me from having to answer. I was glad, despite it meaning that I was now late for English. The teacher gave me a disapproving look when I hurried into class, but didn't say anything, probably because I had never been tardy before. I felt Duncan's eyes on me, but I couldn't bring myself to look at him just yet. He let me be for all of two minutes. What are you so happy about? Inexplicably, I was practically bursting with this emotion. Why does everybody ask me that? Can't I just be in a good mood? Sure you can. He continued to speak to me with his thoughts. Why won't you look at me, though? I carefully composed my face into a neutral expression and turned my head in his direction. See? I'm looking at you. Something funny happened to my stomach when I looked into his pale blue eyes. I was glad that I could speak to him silently, because I was pretty sure there would have been a nervous tremor in my voice if I had spoken aloud. What was happening to me? I had to get a hold of myself. I grasped at the first thing that came to mind to change the subject. Are you going to Megan's party? Duncan made a face. Only because Mandy wants to go. These things are usually full of drunken idiots. We're going too. I've never been to a big party like that. You haven't been missing anything, he said. No matter what Duncan said, I was still excited to go. Saturday evening found me standing before my closet and debating what to wear. Brad had voiced his preference for the pink mini dress. You look so hot in that dress, babe. He had leered at me. That was exactly the reason that I definitely wasn't going to wear that dress. I didn't want to encourage him. I picked out a black skirt that fell to the knee and a red blouse. My lightning bolt necklace and gold hoop earrings completed the look. My shoes had a sensible heel. I wouldn't be turning any heads in this outfit. I wasn't going to the party to show off, but just to have a little fun. Brad actually walked up to the door when he picked me up. He knew enough to be polite to my parents when he assured them that we wouldn't be drinking. I was not reassured, however, when he winked at me after we sat down in his car. What they don't know won't hurt them. You look pretty, babe. Still wish you would have worn the pink dress. He looked at my chest. Cool necklace. Thanks. I was glad that he had to keep his eyes on the road. When we got to Megan's house, I could hear the music from outside. Inside, people had to shout to be heard. Brad greeted people as I followed him through the crowd. We found Megan in the kitchen, where the noise was more tolerable. She was even peppier than usual and actually hugged me. I suspected that she had already started drinking. Brad handed me a drink 
which I held on to just so I wouldn't look out of place. I planned to set it down somewhere when no one was looking. Luckily, Brad became distracted messing around with his buddies. The party wasn't as much fun as I had expected it to be. I felt like an observer rather than a participant. It turned out that Megan's parents were out of town, which was why she had picked this particular weekend to have the party. Megan had been talking to me until Mandy appeared. She informed us that we needed to go freshen our makeup up in the bathroom. My mood had lifted when I saw Duncan, but I was dragged off by Megan and Mandy. Mandy wasted no time in telling us the real reason for our meeting in the bathroom. Tonight's the night. I'm going to have sex with Duncan. Megan squealed excitedly, but I felt like Mandy had just punched me in the stomach. She chattered on, but I didn't hear anything else she said. My hands gripped the cool porcelain sink. Eventually, I realized that they were talking to me. Earth to Susie! Mandy snapped her fingers in front of my face. Are you okay? Megan asked. Uh, yeah, I finally responded. Guess I had too much to drink. Not used to it, huh? Mandy smiled at me. It takes time to build up tolerance. Do you need to puke? I couldn't take any more of this surreal conversation with Duncan's girlfriend. And Brad's ex-girlfriend, I reminded myself. No, I'll be okay. I'm gonna go find Brad. I escaped before they could say anything else. Downstairs, my eyes didn't listen to my brain. Instead of looking for Brad, my gaze sought Duncan. He spotted me, too, and walked toward me. I stood rooted to the spot, seemingly unable to move or look away. His expression was puzzled. What's wrong, Susanna? She's not feeling so great. Gotta get a few more parties under her belt, Mandy answered for me as she wound her arm around Duncan. He scowled at me. You've been drinking? Yes, I shouted. So what? I can have fun, too. Hey, babe. Brad threw his arm over my shoulders. You need another drink. I hadn't even noticed his approach. This time, I took the drink that he offered me and took a defiant sip. Duncan gave me one last disapproving look and allowed Mandy to lead him away. They reached the corner of the room, and she leaned in to kiss him. With her high heels on, she was almost as tall as he was. I took another sip of my drink and turned away. I want to get out of here, I told Brad. He smiled at me. Sure, babe. We made our way toward the door and outside into the cool night air. You gonna finish that, babe? I realized that I was still holding my drink. No. Brad took it from me and downed it. Okay, let's go. I leaned back in the car seat and stared out the window into the darkness as Brad drove. The silence was a relief after the noise of the party. I was so lost in my own thoughts that I didn't notice where we were going until Brad stopped the car and turned off the engine. Where are we? I looked at Brad for the first time since we had left the party. You can see the whole city from up here. He gestured toward the windshield. I glanced at the city lights. It was an impressive view, but I was in no mood to enjoy it. I thought you were taking me home. I want to be alone with you. He leaned closer to me and kissed me before I had a chance to say anything else. I could smell the alcohol on his breath, but that wasn't the only reason I pulled away. His hands were already starting to wander toward my chest. Let's go in the back seat. Brad said. Got more room back there. I have to go home. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to call my parents to come pick me up. Don't you like me, babe? I can make you feel real good. His voice had become husky. He crowded me against the door and ended up kissing my neck when I turned my head away. I pushed in vain against his chest and his hands groped at my blouse. I stopped trying to fight him and felt behind me for the door handle instead. Managing to get the door open, I fell out of the car. Brad was still in the driver's seat. You okay, babe? He opened his door and got out of the car. I scrambled to my feet before he could get to me. Don't touch me! Come on, don't be like that. Get back in the car. 
We'll just enjoy the view for a while. I looked at him warily. I really just want to go home. That's a good idea, Duncan said. Brad was startled. Where'd you come from? I'll drive you home, Susanna. Duncan's voice was dangerously calm. My purse. I hurried to grab it from the floor of Brad's car, where it had fallen during our struggle. Then I began to walk away with Duncan toward his car. Hey, Brad grabbed my arm. Where are you going? Duncan whirled on him. Let go of her. He had a look on his face that made Brad drop my arm and step back. Man, I wasn't gonna... Let's go, Susanna, Duncan said in that same tone of controlled fury. We resumed walking toward his car. He opened the passenger door for me, and I sat down in the car. You're not gonna steal this one too, Brad suddenly yelled. I looked up to see him barreling toward us. Then he fell backwards and landed on his butt. Hey, he looked around in bewilderment. What the hell? Who pushed me? Duncan ignored him as he sat down in the driver's seat and started the car. I pulled my door shut. Thank you, I said as we pulled away. He didn't look at me. Fix your shirt, he growled. I looked down to see that some of the buttons on my blouse had popped open and that my bra was exposed. I burned with shame as I quickly buttoned them. When I dared a glance at Duncan, I saw that he was still looking straight ahead as he drove. His jaw was clenched. How did you put your seatbelt on? He snapped. I pulled it across me and clicked it into place. Why are you yelling at me? Why did you get in the car with him? Duncan countered. You saw that he was drunk. How could I answer that question? I had been out of my mind with jealousy when I saw Mandy kiss him. I was trying to prove to myself that I didn't care. I had wanted to get away from the sight of them together. It was hard to admit these things even to myself. Remembering what Mandy had said in the bathroom made me snap. I can go where I want. So you wanted to get in the car with a drunk idiot? He's not. I mean, he's my boyfriend, I said. You need to have better taste in boyfriends, unless you liked having him rip your clothes off. There was a sharp edge to his voice. He didn't. I mean, he wasn't. I saw what was happening. Duncan smacked the steering wheel with his hand. I was handling it myself. Yes, I could see that. The guy outweighs you by how much? Even if you somehow managed to convince him to drive you home, you might not have gotten there in one piece. Damn it, Susanna. You can't put yourself in situations like that. We were quiet until he pulled into my driveway. Are you okay? His voice was gentle now. It made me want to cry. Yes, I'm fine. Thanks again. Okay, he said. I have to go back for Mandy. I left her at the party. Duncan, are you really going to... I shook my head. Uh, good night. Wait, he said. What did you want to ask me? Nothing. It was nothing. No, tell me, he insisted. Going to what? Mandy. Um, never mind. What about Mandy? Duncan's voice had taken on an intimate tone I didn't recognize. For no reason at all. I was no longer upset. It made no sense that I was thinking about my dream kiss with Duncan. She's waiting for you. I didn't give him a chance to walk me to the door. In a flash, I was out of the car and sprinting toward my house. That night, I had the dream again. Chapter 11 I broke up with Brad over the phone. After the way he had treated me the night before, I had no intention of being alone with him again. He blamed it on the alcohol and swore that it would never happen again but he couldn't convince me to change my mind. It's Duncan, isn't it? He made a move on you. I couldn't believe the nerve of him. Of course not. Duncan has nothing to do with this. Brad snorted. Yeah, right. How come he followed us last night? Mandy already put out for him, and now he's after you. You're unbelievable, I said in exasperation. 
I saw the way you were looking at him, Rad continued stubbornly. You were drunk. Your judgment was impaired, remember? I reminded him. That's why you won't let me touch you, he said. You're hot for him. Now I was really mad. That's the whole problem with you. You think that everything is about sex. That's all you want from me. You don't even like me otherwise. That's why I'm breaking up with you. I hate to break it to you, babe, but that's what all guys want. If you think Duncan's any different, you're fooling yourself. I gave up on arguing with him. Goodbye, Brad. Bye, babe. Call me when you grow up. I hung up the phone and stared out the window. I wondered what had happened with Duncan and Mandy. It was none of my business, I reminded myself. Duncan was my friend, nothing more. Although he had become a very good friend, he cared about me and understood me. He is different, I said aloud. I thought about my dream, in which Duncan and I kissed. It was the same one that I'd had shortly before meeting him for the first time. Caitlin was sure it meant that Duncan and I were supposed to be together. I thought about how I had been disappointed with the two boyfriends I'd had so far. Yet, my friendship with Duncan was going great. I decided right then not to let jealousy ruin it and just be happy with what I had. I spent a good hour on the phone with Caitlin that evening. I told her about the party and the drama which had led to my breakup with Brad. I left out what Mandy had said about her plans for the night with Duncan. She shouldn't have even told me about that, so I wasn't going to say anything. I wanted to protect Duncan's privacy. Caitlin was glad that I had finally broken up with Brad and immediately remarked that she couldn't wait until Duncan found out. I steered the conversation to her relationship with Alex, which was still going strong. The next day at school, I realized that I didn't even care that I wasn't with Brad anymore. He hadn't ever become a big part of my life, so it wouldn't be a big deal when he went back to ignoring my existence. I had no problem concentrating on my classes. I greeted Duncan with a smile. Hi. Hi. He returned my smile. I immediately switched to talking with my thoughts. I broke up with Brad. It's about time, Duncan said. We lapsed into silence after that and paid attention to the teacher. I had to force myself to concentrate and stop wondering about what had happened with Mandy. When class was almost over, Duncan spoke to me again. I know you usually sit with Caitlin during lunch, but I was hoping that I could talk to you alone today. We can find an empty table. Unless you think that Caitlin will be upset. She won't mind, I answered quickly. Duncan's smile told me he already knew that. Great. I'll see you at lunch. I was now dying to know what he wanted to talk to me about. See you at lunch. In the hallway, I took out my cell phone and texted Caitlin. She soon texted back. I knew it. Unlike Caitlin, I didn't jump to conclusions. Still, food was the last thing on my mind at lunch. Duncan was waiting for me in front of the cafeteria. As I approached him, I noticed anew the stunning contrast of his jet-black hair and his incredibly pale blue eyes. Reminding myself that he was my friend and that this wasn't a date didn't make the fluttering in my stomach subside. We stood in the lunch line, and I went through the motions of picking out food. Then we sat down at an empty table, and he began to eat his lunch while I watched him. Aren't you going to eat, Susanna? Duncan asked. I, uh, what did you want to talk to me about? The suspense was playing havoc with my nerves. Tell me how Brad took the breakup. I tried not to feel disappointed. Is that all you wanted to talk about? No, he said. But let's start there. I had no idea what to think now. Okay, well, I broke up with him over the phone. Smart girl. He had stopped eating and was giving me his full attention now. He, um, I licked my lips nervously. He said that I'm fooling myself, that all guys want sex. Duncan finished the sentence for me. I looked down in embarrassment. He surprised me by laughing. 
What a pair we are. Mandy broke up with me because I wouldn't sleep with her. Isn't that a twist? My heart surged with happiness at this news. She told me that it's no big deal to be gay. My mouth dropped open. You're kidding. She's not lacking in self-confidence, is she? He smiled. Her world is very simple. Do you think we're complicating things too much? I couldn't believe I was having this conversation with him. No, Susanna, I don't. When you share yourself with the wrong person, you can get very hurt. My eyes widened as I understood his meaning. Oh. Duncan looked away. It's in the past. My mind was reeling with this revelation. No wonder he was so upset about his ex-girlfriend. They had apparently shared much more than their thoughts. Look, Susanna. He was looking at me again. What I wanted to tell you was that I was just waiting for Mandy to break up with me. Now that you've broken up with Brad, we have nothing to stop us. My heart was starting to beat faster as I listened to his words. What I had secretly hoped for was finally happening. The rest of the cafeteria no longer existed as I focused completely on Duncan. I was barely breathing as I waited to hear what he would say. His eyes never left my face as he spoke. I like you, Susanna. Being friends with you is great, but I want... He froze. His eyes took on an eerie look that reminded me of something Caitlin had said. You looked like you were in a trance, she had told me. Concerned, I reached out to touch him. Duncan, what's wrong? When my hand touched his arm, he reacted as if I had burned him. Get away from me, Susanna. I watched as he sprang out of his seat. What? He grabbed his tray and took it to the garbage can. In one swift movement, he dumped the contents into the trash. Leaving the tray on top of the garbage can, he began to walk quickly away. I hurried after him. Duncan! He slowed down but didn't stop. Go back by Caitlin. Leave me alone. Why? What's going on? He was looking warily around. We can't be friends anymore. I have to go. I followed him into the hallway. Duncan, please talk to me. His eyes were wild now. Do you hear me? I said stay away from me. Get away from me right now. Duncan, I pleaded. You were going to say something. I pushed on bravely, even though my heart was pounding. I've liked you, Duncan, ever since I met you. My laugh was shaky. <laughs> Even before I met you, the words rushed out of me now. I think we can be more than friends. Oh, Susanna. The anguished look on his face pierced my heart. I wanted to believe that we could be happy. I thought it was over. What are you talking about? Why are you so upset? The sudden vehemence in Duncan's voice was shocking. Get away from me. I mean it, Susanna. You have to go. No. Not until you explain to me what is going on. I struggled to keep up with his pace. Lover spat. Duncan stopped as suddenly as if he had hit a brick wall. He took a deep breath before he turned to face the source of the feminine voice behind us. I was slower to look, since I was intently watching his reaction. She reminded me of a princess from a fairy tale. She was, of course, dressed in modern clothes but her beauty was different from the sexy appeal of Mandy. She was poised, graceful and petite, with delicate features. Golden hair cascaded down her back. Her green eyes were as dazzling as emeralds. I had never felt plainer in my life. Duncan, she purred. I watched in fascination as the color drained from his face. My hackles rose as I realized that he looked almost afraid. What the hell? are you doing here? Is that any way to greet an old friend? She smiled sweetly. Aren't you going to introduce me to your new girlfriend? Duncan didn't even look at me. She's not my girlfriend. She's just some crazy girl who follows me around, practically a stalker. Not that I need to explain myself to you. I repeat, what are you doing here? Fine, I'll do it myself. She walked up to me and extended her hand. I'm Anna. I shook her hand numbly. 
Don't touch her, Duncan exploded. Susanna, go away. Anna rolled her eyes at me. He's always overreacting. Have you noticed that, Susanna? I was just talking to the girl, Duncan. She leaned in conspiratorially toward me. Really? I think he expects us to fight over him. Anna, Duncan thundered. What are you doing here? I just registered for school here. Her smile seemed warm and friendly. You can't do that, he protested. It's a free country, Anna replied. I decided that a change of climate would do me good. It seems to have done wonders for you. There was an undercurrent to her words that I didn't understand. The bell rang, and students began to pour out of the cafeteria into the hallway. I was unsure of what to do now. I needed to get to class, but I couldn't miss what was going on between Duncan and Anna. I still hadn't managed to say one word during the drama unfolding before me. She brought the showdown to an end. See you tomorrow, Duncan. It was nice to meet you, Susanna. I hope we can all be friends. I watched her disappear into the crowd of students. So, that's her. Your ex-girlfriend. Duncan looked defeated. You can't talk to me anymore, Susanna. Not ever. Especially not in our special way. Do you understand? Yes, I said. You want her back, and you don't want me in the way. I turned away from him and plunged blindly into the throng as I willed myself not to cry. Chapter 12 Let's report her to the police. Caitlin took another spoonful of ice cream. I glumly licked some ice cream off my spoon. For what? We were sitting in Caitlin's kitchen. I had been unable to tell her about Duncan and Anna until now. Caitlin must have known that something was wrong when I didn't return any of her text messages. One look at my face after school had made me hold all of her questions. She had driven in silence, as I had finally given in to my tears in her car. When we arrived at her house, I went into the bathroom to splash cold water on my puffy eyes. Caitlin was waiting for me in the kitchen with two bowls and a carton of ice cream. What's it called? Caitlin asked. Oh yeah, statutory rape? Duncan's under 18. So is Anna, I answered. Doesn't seem like it, Caitlin said. She sounds about 30. No, I said sadly. She's our age. Doesn't act like it, she insisted. Who shakes hands? Whatever. You'll see her for yourself. She'll be going to school with us. I wished that the cold ice cream could numb my heart as well as my mouth. Anyway, she continued, it doesn't mean they're going to get back together. From what you said, it doesn't sound like Duncan was happy to see her again. Doesn't matter. He sure doesn't want anything to do with me anymore. He told me that we can't even be friends. I shoved a big spoonful of ice cream into my mouth and gave myself brain freeze. I can't believe he said that. Caitlin fumed. I feel like going over there to talk to him right now. Don't, I said. Just let him do what he wants. I can't deal with him anymore. She gave me a sympathetic look, and we lapsed into silence as we finished our ice cream. Caitlin insisted on driving me home, despite my insistence to walk there. You look really tired, Susie. She gave me a hug. She offered to stay with me until my parents got home from work but I lied that I was going to take a nap. After she dropped me off, I immediately began cooking dinner so that I could keep busy. My parents praised my efforts and told me that the meal was delicious, but it might as well have been cardboard for all the pleasure I took in eating it. I did my homework, took a shower, and went to bed early. I woke up with a resigned attitude. There was no use in trying to avoid the inevitable, so I might as well get it over with. The previous day had been such a roller coaster of emotions for me, but today I felt amazingly calm. Caitlin eyed me warily when she picked me up for school. How you holding up? Don't worry, I'm done crying over Duncan, I assured her. She didn't look convinced. Just text me if you need to bail. I'll cut class with you. Thanks, but I'll be fine. Really, 
Yesterday was just such a shock, you know? I found a smile for her. Besides, how much ice cream can one girl eat? My glib comments didn't fool her, and I couldn't lie to myself. I wasn't fine, but there was nothing I could do about it. Duncan had become important to me. I had imagined a romantic future for us, and he had seemed on the verge of asking me out, until Anna showed up. He obviously still had strong feelings for her. I saw her in the hallway after my first class. She was talking to none other than my ex-boyfriend, Brad. I tried to walk by undetected, but she recognized me. Hi, Susanna. Hi. Brad tore his eyes away from her. Hey, but... Susie. Now he knew my name. Hi, babe. I took perverse pleasure in the uncomfortable look on his face. Later, I said breezily and walked on without a second glance. That lifted my spirits, however briefly. I wondered what Anna's plans were. It had to be more than a coincidence that she had moved to the exact same town as Duncan. Valley View wasn't a well-known city by any means. How had she convinced her parents to move all the way across the country? Now that I had seen her in person, I was even more curious about her. Why had she broken up with Duncan? Maybe, like Mandy, she had thought that she was too young to be tied down to one guy. Had she now changed her mind and decided that she had made a mistake in letting him go? These things were no longer any of my business. Duncan had made it clear that he wanted to distance himself from me. He had told Anna that I was a stalker, which had hurt my feelings terribly after the close friendship that we had shared. Despite everything, my eyes were immediately drawn to him as I entered English class. I was shocked by his appearance. He looked exhausted, like he hadn't slept at all the night before. Are you okay? I couldn't help my concern. Fine, he muttered as he quickly looked away from me. I managed to mind my own business for a while. Then curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to try to sneak a quick peek at his thoughts. No! Duncan's voice was loud enough to interrupt the teacher and make everybody in class turn to stare at him as he shot up out of his chair. May I go to the restroom? He didn't actually wait to hear the answer as he hurried out of the classroom. When you gotta go, you gotta go, somebody said. Everyone except me laughed. I sat there blinking away my tears. In case I had missed it the day before, Duncan had once again driven home the point that he didn't want anything to do with me. Even my concern was unwanted. I had no intention of becoming the stalker that he described me as being. It was for this reason that I ignored the nagging feeling that something was very, very wrong. If he wanted distance, then I would give it to him. When he came back to class, I resolutely ignored him. The minute class was over, I stood up to beat Duncan out the door but he stood in my way. Don't ever do that again, he hissed. Get out of my way, I snapped. He remained where he was, his eyes locked on mine. Please, Susanna, you have to understand how important this is. Anna must never know about our connection. So much for being different, I said bitterly. I'm not the one you have to worry about. Last time I saw Anna, she seemed to be getting friendly with Brad. You should hurry before he beats you to her bed. The hurt look on Duncan's face didn't give me much satisfaction. Wordlessly, he stepped back to let me pass. My anger drained out of me as quickly as it had sprung up. I felt sad that my friendship with him had to end this way, but it wasn't my choice. At least I still had Caitlin, who was a true friend. It was a relief to see her at lunch and know that she understood how I felt. We sat down at our usual table but we weren't alone for long. Hi, Susanna. Do you mind if I sit with you? Anna was holding her lunch tray and looking at me expectantly. Uh, sure. I felt like my face was going to crack from my forced smile. Thanks. Anna took a seat next to me. Being new here, I don't know many people yet. This is my friend, Caitlin, I said. Caitlin, this is Anna. It's so nice to meet you. Anna half rose out of her seat 
and leaned toward Caitlin with her hand extended. A bewildered Caitlin shook her hand. Nice to meet you, too. Everyone's been nice, except Duncan. I tried to sit by him, but he was cranky. Her green eyes looked to me for sympathy. Anyway, I'd like to get to know you. I meant what I said yesterday. I hope that we can all be friends. She had caught me by surprise. Uh, yeah. Also, Anna continued, Brad asked me to the homecoming dance. He told me that you used to be his girlfriend. I don't want to get off on the wrong foot with you. So, if you're not okay with it, I'll tell him no. She's fine with it, Caitlin blurted out. Anna smiled at Caitlin and turned back to me. Are you sure? Absolutely, I said with sincerity. Okay, she waited a beat. So, has Duncan asked you to the dance? My smile faltered. No. She covered my hand with her own. It'll be okay. I can tell that he likes you. Really? I asked before I could stop myself. Her smile was encouraging. I know him. He definitely likes you. Are you okay with that? Caitlin asked the question that I didn't dare. Anna turned her attention to Caitlin. You're very direct. I like it. To answer your question, yes, I am very okay with that. Duncan and I were over a long time ago. I've moved on, and I hope that he can too. I wasn't sure what to think now. Anna seemed so sincere and friendly. She was being a lot nicer to me than Duncan. I decided that I wasn't going to hold his behavior against her. Yes, I said with conviction. We can be friends. She beamed at me. I had a good feeling about you the moment I met you. What are you doing? The three of us looked up at Duncan. Anna spoke first. Duncan, why don't you join us? Anna, he seethed. I asked you what you're doing. I'm getting to know Susanna and Caitlin. They were kind enough to let me sit with them after you turned me away. I've changed my mind. Come sit with me. Despite his words, Duncan couldn't have sounded less inviting. Why haven't you asked Susanna to the dance? Even Caitlin was shocked by this. I heard her gasp as I held my breath. Duncan's pale blue eyes flicked to me for the briefest instant, then fixed on Anna. Are you coming or what? Anna spoke to me. He does like playing hard to get, but we know better. She smiled at me and Caitlin. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to try to talk some sense into him. See you later. As soon as they were out of earshot, Caitlin exclaimed. Wow, I know, I said. She seems nice, I finished for her. But weird, Caitlin added. My laugh was genuine. Caitlin, you don't have to do that. It's okay. No, she said. I mean, she did sometimes act like she's way older, again with the shaking hands thing. I shrugged. It's a little different. Anyway, Caitlin brightened. Your problem is solved. She's going out with Brad. That doesn't change how Duncan's acting toward me. That's another thing that's weird, she mused. It doesn't seem like he wants her back. Why wouldn't he let her sit with him if he did? Who knows what he's thinking. He sure doesn't want me to know. He threw a fit when I tried to hear his thoughts in English today. Try now, Caitlin said. Maybe he'll be too distracted by Anna to notice. I shook my head. No, I'm not going to spy on him. We were good friends for a while, even though he doesn't want me to be anymore. Then listen to Anna's thoughts, she suggested. See if we can really trust her. Even as I considered this, my mind rebelled against it. It was the bad feeling on the day of the storm multiplied several times. I shivered. That's not a good idea. That's not a good idea at all. Chapter 13 I was going to the homecoming dance. I wasn't sure how Caitlin and Anna had convinced me to go without a date. 
The two of them had worn me down by constantly insisting that the dance wouldn't be any fun without me. Despite Duncan's disapproval, Anna had taken to sitting with us at lunch. In the end, he had grudgingly started sitting with us too. He mostly silently listened to our conversations. I wasn't sure if he was babysitting me or Anna. He seemed to watch the two of us like a hawk. I couldn't understand what he was doing. He knew that Anna was dating Brad. Duncan had ignored all of her embarrassing suggestions to ask me to the dance. I caught her alone in the hallway and asked her to stop. I'm sorry, Susanna. I don't like to give up when I want something, and I want the two of you to be happy. I feel like it's my fault that you and Duncan aren't together. It's nobody's fault. It's just not meant to be. Anna's green eyes were troubled. Do you believe in fate, Susanna? Not really. It's just Caitlin rubbing off on me. Okay. Anna relented. I'll back off and stop meddling in your love life, even though it's against my nature to stop before I win. Later at lunch, Anna was true to her word. We discussed our plans to go shopping for dresses, without Anna saying anything to Duncan about taking me to the dance. It did nothing to improve his mood. I was used to his silent brooding by now. The rest of us were caught up in happy thoughts of it being Friday, and having the freedom of the weekend ahead of us. I was surprised to see Duncan in the park that afternoon. I had missed our walks and long conversations. I suspected that he hadn't set foot in the park since Anna had arrived, only because he was avoiding me. The mild weather was still holding, but the days were getting shorter. Duncan didn't even bother with saying hi. You need to stay away from Anna. I sighed. Whatever happened between you and Anna has nothing to do with me. Stop trying to bring me into your drama. I'm trying to keep you out of it, but you're not helping. Now you're spending your weekend with her. I'm going shopping with Caitlin and Anna tomorrow. I'm doing normal things, Duncan. His agitation was palpable. The more time you spend with her, the more dangerous it is for you. Dangerous how? Anna has been nothing but nice to me. This is what she does, Susanna. She plays this game while it amuses her. Then what, Duncan? She'll drop me as a friend? I think I can handle it. I've had some experience in that area lately. I'm still your friend, Susanna. Could have fooled me. In fact, I remember specifically that you said we can't be friends anymore. I did say that, he admitted. It was because I wanted to keep you safe from Anna, but she's fixated on you anyway. Don't you see, Duncan? You're the one who is fixated on Anna. She's moved on. She's dating Brad and making friends with people. He looked at me with haunted eyes. You don't see it coming. She draws you in and makes you think that she cares. Then she turns on you just like that. I chose my words carefully. Duncan, when's the last time that you got a good night's sleep? He closed his eyes for a moment. It doesn't make it go away. You don't know how to fight her, and I'm weak. Don't worry about me, I said with exaggerated bravado. I can take care of myself. All I do is worry about you. The words hung in the air between us, and my breath caught in my throat as our eyes met. I had thought that Duncan had become cold toward me. Now, here in our place, the unguarded look on his face made my heart surge with emotion. Duncan, I breathed. He took a step back. I can't. I took a step forward. Duncan. Don't let your guard down with Anna, for what it's worth. I was crestfallen as he practically ran away from me. His paranoia had me worried. I wondered if I should go talk to his mom, but I decided to give it some more time. Hopefully, he would come around once he saw that Anna had done me no harm. The next day, Caitlin came over and Anna picked us up to go shopping. She had offered to drive. We stared at her car as she pulled into my driveway. Guess her dad was feeling more guilty than mine. Caitlin whispered in my ear. I was no expert on cars, but even I knew that Anna's car was expensive. She wouldn't be taking the bus home from school anytime soon. It made me wonder what kind of house she lived in. 
Probably, if I had known anything about fashion, I would have realized that she wore designer clothes. I didn't dwell on it, though. In the end, I saw a car as a way to get somewhere. In this case, the mall. We tried on dresses at several different stores. I know a place, Anna said. We got back in her car, and she drove us to a bridal shop. They have other dresses, too. The store was pretty big and had all kinds of fancy dresses. I had a feeling that Anna had wanted to go there all along. She had only gone to the mall to fit in with us. I went straight for the discount dresses. Anna and Caitlin tried on several dresses and modeled them for me. Anna decided on an emerald green dress that really drew attention to her green eyes. Caitlin fell in love with a purple dress that looked great on her. I was debating between a red and a blue dress. Anna picked out a white dress that wasn't on the discount rack. Try it on. Caitlin wrinkled her nose. It's homecoming, not her wedding. She was right. It was the complete opposite of the jewel-toned mini dresses that were in style. Humor me, Anna pleaded. What could it hurt to try it on? Okay. What did it matter? I was only going to the dance because they had begged me to. I took the dress into the changing room. Come out and show us after you put it on. Anna's voice followed me into the dressing room. When I stepped outside, her smile was triumphant. I knew it. The dress was a light, airy confection that fell just below my knees. It was demure compared to all the other dresses that we had tried on. Anna's green eyes were shining. You look like an angel. She's right. Caitlin marveled. Normally, I would say go for straight-up sexy, but that dress is totally you. Duncan won't be able to resist you. I tried to act casual. Oh, did he tell you that he's going? He didn't have to tell me, Anna said. If you're going, then he's going. It's as simple as that. I looked at the price tag and gasped. I'm putting this back. Caitlin walked over to look and whistled. Your dad's going to flip out. No way can I afford this. I think I'll get the red one. No, this one is perfect. I'll buy it for you. Caitlin and I both stared at Anna. I was sure that I couldn't have heard her right. She stepped closer, still admiring the dress. Really, no other dress will do. Well, that's very generous, but I can't let you do that. It's actually not very generous since I can easily afford it. My family has money, so please, let me do this. Wait, Caitlin said. Wait, Anna Thorne? Thorne as in Thorne Enterprises? Please, don't make a big deal out of it. Caitlin's eyes were practically popping out of her head. Are you kidding me? Your family owns Thorne Enterprises. Now that I thought about it, the name was familiar. It was dawning on me that Anna's expensive car was only the tip of the iceberg. My family has money, she had said. Apparently, that was one heck of an understatement. Caitlin grabbed my arm. Just let her buy you the damn dress. Chapter 14 How do you know so much about Thorn Enterprises? I was talking to Caitlin on the phone after our shopping trip. She was getting ready for her date with Alex. My dad worked on a case for them. I heard him talking about it to his girlfriend the last time I visited him. It was a big deal for him because it's a huge company. He said that Mr. Thorne is a shark in the business world. Caitlin's dad is a lawyer in New York City. He moved there after he and Caitlin's mom divorced years earlier. There were a lot more career opportunities in a big city which was what was troubling me about this revelation about Anna. What is a family like that doing in Valley View, Ohio? I've been wondering the same thing, Caitlin said. I don't think I should have let her buy me the dress. I feel weird about that. Why? Caitlin asked. It's pocket change for her. It's like you buying her a pack of gum, and it's not like you asked her to pay for it. She was the one who wanted to buy it for you. That's the whole point. I can't do anything like that for her. It makes me feel like I owe her something. You don't owe her anything. Anyway, she had fun finding the perfect dress for you. 
I've got to admit that she's got good taste. I thought about Duncan. Yes, she does. Somehow, Caitlin picked up on my real meaning. I bet she's right about Duncan, too. He'll probably be at the dance. I let that one go. I feel bad about messing up the dance for you and Alex. It had been decided that I would ride to the homecoming dance with Caitlin and Alex. There was no way that I would get in another car with Brad. Anna seemed to instinctively understand the awkwardness of the situation. She hadn't even suggested that I go with her and Brad. Would you stop that? I'm thrilled that you're finally going to get to know Alex, and he'll be glad to get to know you too. He's heard me talk about you so much. My dad could drop me off and pick me up. He's so happy that I didn't spend any money on a dress that he won't mind driving me. No, Caitlin insisted. You are not going to the dance by yourself. I don't want to hear any more about it. Anyway, I have to go. Alex will be here soon. Okay, have fun. Talk to you tomorrow. We hung up and I went downstairs. It was Saturday night and I was watching TV with my parents. I was seriously starting to consider getting a job. At least then I would be making money. I would be able to buy my own dresses for dances that I didn't really want to attend. As I sat on the couch eating popcorn, I couldn't help but wonder what Duncan was doing tonight. As far as I knew, he wasn't dating anyone right now either. Brad had accused me of not responding to him because I was interested in Duncan. I had denied this, but now I realized that it was true. Not only was I interested in Duncan, but I was only interested in Duncan. There was no other guy that I thought about, no other guy that I wanted. I had never felt this way about anyone else. My popcorn was suddenly tasteless. With a sinking feeling in my stomach, I realized that I was in love with Duncan. This realization caused me to be uncomfortable in Duncan's presence. I looked at him as little as possible. I paid more attention to what the teacher was saying in English than I ever had before. At lunch, I focused on my conversations with Caitlin and Anna. Duncan continued to sit with us. Occasionally, he would ask Caitlin how the rehearsals for the play were going. Other than that and school gossip, most of our conversations always came back to our plans for the upcoming dance. Duncan was silent on that subject. The evening of the dance, Caitlin and Alex came to pick me up. Mom took pictures of the three of us. Dad smiled at me approvingly, especially after he saw how much shorter Caitlin's dress was compared to mine. Alex and I hit it off immediately. I already felt affection for him because he treated Caitlin so well. During our conversation in the car, we discovered that we both loved action movies and the trip to the dance went by in a flash. Thank God we're here. Caitlin was the first one to open her car door. You people have no culture. Remember, we're here to dance. If I hear one more word about Die Hard or Terminator, you're both walking home. Her happy smile told us that she was just teasing. Don't worry, Alex said. On the way home, we're going to talk about Bruce Lee. Yes, I said. The karate genre merits its own special discussion. I'm going in there where I can't hear you over the sound of the music. I was glad now that they had talked me into going to the dance. Hanging out with Caitlin and Alex had put me in a good mood. When we entered the school, I saw many of my classmates. It was different seeing them all dressed up. Everybody looked great and somehow more grown up. Anna and Brad were already in the gym, which had been decorated for the dance. We had just greeted each other when Caitlin's favorite slow song came on. She grabbed Alex's arm. Dance now. I watched her pull him onto the dance floor. I was still smiling in amusement as I turned back to Anna and Brad. She was looking in the other direction. What did I tell you, Susanna? I turned to look and saw Duncan walking toward us, and I couldn't pull my eyes away from him. He looked amazing in his blue dress shirt. His pale blue eyes were on me, and I felt self-conscious. Hi, I said softly and looked down at my shoes. Duncan, doesn't Susanna look lovely? Anna's promise to stay out of my love life apparently didn't extend to this dance. You both look beautiful, Duncan said diplomatically. She's the only girl here hiding her legs. 
I don't know why, because she has nice legs. If you had seen her in that pink dress. Brad finally realized that he was talking to his girlfriend. Uh, do you want something to drink? Yes. Why don't you go get me some of that punch? Brad eagerly made his escape, and I wished that I could too. I was desperately trying to think of something to say to change the subject. He's not very bright. Still, what he lacks in intelligence, he makes up for in enthusiasm. Isn't that right, Susanna? Anna had seemingly directed the question at me, but she was looking at Duncan. He met her gaze evenly. Anna laughed delightedly and clapped her hands. Well, Susanna, I guess you really are as sweet and innocent as you look. Good for you. I was glad that the lights were dimmed, because my face was hot with embarrassment. Let's go find a table, Duncan said. Really, Duncan, I don't know why you didn't just ask Susanna to the dance in the first place. Luckily, Brad came back with the punch. Even his presence was preferable to being alone with Duncan and Anna. When Caitlin and Alex joined us, it was much better. We all ended up on the dance floor together when the dance songs played. Only Duncan remained at the table. When the others went to slow dance, I was left alone with him. You look so beautiful tonight, he told me. I... thank you. You look great, too. He continued to gaze at me. Really? Heavenly, I think, is the word. My nervousness made me blurt out. Anna bought me the dress. Her name was like throwing cold water in his face. The dreamy look was gone from his eyes. What? It... it was expensive. She said that her family has money. Did you know that? Yes. We met at a private school in California. My mom does pretty well with her art. So, Anna bought you the dress? I didn't want her to, but she wouldn't let it go, and Caitlin said I should let her, I explained. Hey, it's okay. Anna has money to burn. See? There was no need to worry. She's been nice to me. Generous, even. So, what's wrong, then? Duncan asked. What do you mean? I had to look away from those eyes. You've been different, Susanna. You've been avoiding me. But that's what you said you wanted. I've been saying it since Anna came here, but you didn't listen. What changed? Did she threaten you? Of course not. It has nothing to do with Anna, I said. Then what is it? Nothing. I was relieved to see the others coming back to the table. Next up was the crowning of the homecoming king and queen. It was no surprise when Brad and Mandy won. They weren't a couple anymore, but they were still the most popular guy and girl. Brad's team had also won the big game, so things were going great for him. Not to mention that Anna was his girlfriend, at least for the time being. When I looked at them, I didn't see true love. Caitlin and Alex, though, seemed to be truly happy. The night was winding down, and the dance would be over soon. I'd had a much better time than I had expected to. Another slow dance came on, and it was announced that it would be the last dance of the night. Don't tell me that you're not even going to ask Susanna for one dance. You should be ashamed of yourself, Duncan. I had figured out Anna's evil plan. She was trying to embarrass me to death. Dance with me, Susanna. Startled, I looked up at Duncan. He was standing beside me with his hand extended. I took it and stood up. Then Duncan's hands were around my waist, and my hands were on his shoulders and we were swaying to the music. Everything else fell away. There were only the two of us. Tell me what's been bothering you, he said. I can't. Why not? Duncan asked. Because you don't want to hear it. I do. You can tell me anything. His pale blue eyes searched mine. Tell me, Susanna. I love you. The words were out, and I couldn't take them back. Duncan's sharp intake of breath was audible, even though my heart was pounding in my ears. His eyes were burning into mine, and he was pulling me closer. Susanna, I... He stiffened then, and he raised his head to look behind me. I turned my head to see Anna watching us intently. 
She paid no attention to Brad kissing her neck. Duncan removed his hands from my waist and stepped back. My arms fell to my sides. Thank you for the dance, Susanna. Good night. Good night, I repeated. I didn't cry this time, not even when I was alone in my room later. I had managed to banter with Caitlin and Alex on the way home. Anna had given me a hug when we were leaving the dance. Aren't you glad you came? She asked. Yes, I had fun. It was like I had locked a part of me away. I was going to deal with it later, and so was Duncan. Chapter 15 On Monday, Duncan didn't sit with us at lunch. I wasn't surprised, since he had told me in English that he was now going to really and truly keep his distance from me. The way he was looking at me almost made me forget that we were sitting in a classroom. What you said. I can't stop thinking about it. If Anna finds out how I feel. I just watched him without saying anything. I was locking all of this away into that same secret place in the back of my mind. Don't be mad, Susanna. I'm not mad. The bell rang and class began. I heard Duncan sigh as I turned my attention to the teacher and I didn't look at him again until class was over. As the other students filed out of the classroom, Duncan and I gazed at each other silently. I was the one who finally looked away, as I stood up and took a step toward the door. Then I turned to look at him one last time. See you later, maybe. I didn't think about him again until Caitlin mentioned him at lunch. Why isn't Duncan sitting with us? I shrugged. I wanted to invite him to my birthday party. It's in three weeks. She turned to Anna. I hope that's not short notice for you. I wouldn't miss it. Great. I guess I'll talk to Duncan later. I wonder where he's at. Is he at school today? Yes, I said. I saw him in English. Surprisingly, Anna said nothing on the subject. She steered the conversation to other topics, and I contributed actively to the discussion. When I thought about it later, I would be amazed at the way I was able to focus exclusively on what was going on at the moment. In some ways, it was like taking a test. I put all other thoughts out of my mind. What was brewing below the surface was a different story. All day, I walked around calm and in control, unaware that pent-up feelings were building inside of me. Caitlin had rehearsals after school, and I was taking the bus home. That didn't explain why I was walking in the opposite direction from the exit. Anna and Brad passed me in the hallway, and I said bye to them. Then I continued down the hall until I found Duncan at his locker. How do you feel? His eyes scanned the hallway. Susanna, I thought I explained. I just saw her leave with Brad. Now answer me. How do you feel? What? You said that you don't want Anna to know how you feel, so how do you feel? Duncan turned away from me to close his locker. I don't want to talk about that. Why? You said that I can tell you anything. And I did. I told you even though I didn't want to. I told you how I feel about you. Now you owe me the truth. I want to know, no matter what it is, I want to know how you feel. Susanna, please, just leave it alone. Duncan, no. He started to walk away. I leaned back against the door I was standing next to and concentrated on his thoughts. He turned back and closed the distance between us in two long strides. His hand slammed into the locker above me as he leaned over me. I told you not to do that. I stared at him in shock. S sorry I just wanted to know. You can't do that. If Anna picks up on it. So what if she does? It's something we all share. Duncan's laugh was harsh. Anna doesn't like to share. He leaned down so that his face was the only thing in my field of vision. Listen to me carefully, Susanna. She can't know about your abilities. I caught my breath. Suddenly, Anna was the last thing on my mind. The way we were standing right now mirrored the kiss that he had projected into my head to show me how visions worked. I found myself wanting to experience that kiss for real. Duncan's pale eyes had darkened, 
and his breathing had changed. His gaze shifted to my mouth. I couldn't seem to control my breathing anymore, and I felt so weak that I was sure the locker was the only thing keeping me from falling down. His mouth descended toward mine until I could feel his warm breath. Someone laughed. Poor Duncan, Mandy said as she walked past us. Still pretending. Duncan startled and straightened up to his full height. He took a step back, and his voice was husky when he spoke. I'm sorry, Susanna. I... I cut him off when I took a step forward and raised my arms to grab hold of his neck and pull his head down. It was everything that I dreamed it would be. As soon as my lips touched his, Duncan seemed to become just as lost in the kiss as I was. I don't know how long it went on, but when he finally managed to pull away, the entire hallway was empty. Susanna, he rasped. We can't. My lips were still tingling. Duncan, I breathed. God, Susanna. He ran a hand through his hair. Don't look at me like that. It's already hard enough to stay away from you. I was thrilled to hear him say that. Why do you have to stay away from me? Sudden doubt crept in. You don't still want her back, do you? I've never wanted her back. Mom and I would have taken off again when she showed up here, but we couldn't leave you alone with her. Wait, I said. You mean you left California because of Anna? Duncan was pacing now. I never thought she would follow me here. I thought she'd just move on to her next victim. Victim? Are you saying she's a stalker? Have you been to the police? The police can't deal with her. Besides, she hasn't broken any laws. That doesn't mean she's not dangerous. A teacher came walking down the hallway. You two waiting for a ride? I looked at Duncan. I missed the bus. He nodded at the teacher. I'll give her a ride home. As we walked outside, I looked at Duncan with concern. How is she dangerous? His answer was evasive. If we're lucky, you'll never have to find out. Duncan, I said carefully. I don't know what happened between you and Anna, but she's been nothing but nice to me. First, assess the situation, and then use it to your advantage. We were approaching his car. What? He took out his keys and unlocked the doors. It's something her father taught her. He was talking about business, but Anna lives her whole life that way. We got into the car, and Duncan drove out of the parking lot. Her dad has been grooming her to take over the family business from a young age. He taught her how to play golf, and even took her on business trips with him all over the world. She told me that she spent more time around adults than kids while she was growing up. Her dad was always proud of how impressed they were by her manners. It's nice that her dad spent so much time with her. Caitlin's dad is a workaholic, too, but she hardly ever sees him. I don't know if nice is the word, Duncan said. He taught her that you have to be ruthless to get what you want. Do you think he's going overboard because he doesn't have a son? He actually does have a son from his first marriage. He's a teacher at an elementary school. Mr. Thorne decided that he's too soft, doesn't have the killer instinct, not like Anna. Where's her mother? I asked. She was on her fifth marriage, the last I heard. Anna hasn't seen her since she was little. A kid would have slowed down her party lifestyle. Plus, Mr. Thorne thought she would be a bad influence on Anna. I felt kind of sorry for Anna. Her life hadn't been so perfect after all. Does her dad know that she can read minds? No. Anna learned about that from one of her nannies. Mr. Thorne hit the roof when he found her reading a book about psychic abilities. He fired the woman for exposing Anna to what he called complete nonsense. After that, she researched it secretly on her own. We were both lost in our own thoughts until Duncan pulled into my driveway and turned off the car. I'm going to walk you to the door, and then we have to go back to only seeing each other at school just like I told you this morning. I put my hand on his arm to keep him from getting out of the car. He looked down at my hand and then up into my eyes. I leaned closer to him. Duncan, I said softly. He drew in a ragged breath. No, we have to stop this. His eyes, though, 
were saying something completely different. I watched as the pale blue turned darker again. Excitement coursed through me as I watched him lose his battle with himself. In the next instant, he was kissing me. This time, it was even more incredible, because he deepened the kiss until we were both breathless. He pulled back and looked at me with accusing eyes. No fair, he said between breaths. I waited until I had caught my breath. First assess the situation, then use it to your advantage. That's not funny, Susanna. You're right. It's not funny. I think we have something special, but it's no good because your ex-girlfriend doesn't approve. You don't understand, he said. I've never felt this way before. Of course, I don't have your experience. Duncan flinched at my emphasis on the last word. It was all a lie. Nothing that I felt for her was real, because she was never the person I thought she was. Duncan. I tried to touch his hand but he pulled back. So what now? You can't ever be in another relationship? Not now. She already suspects that you're important to me. I don't want to give her any more proof. I'm hoping that she'll get bored here and leave. I'm important to you? How can you not already know that? Duncan asked. Maybe because you keep pushing me away. You don't know how hard that is for me, he said how much I want to be with you. I held his gaze. Then be with me. I can't. I won't be able to hide it. She'll see it. See what? What will she see, Duncan? That I love you. That left me speechless. I sat in stunned silence and stared at him with huge eyes. My heart was so full, it felt like it would burst. Duncan looked miserable. Now you know. Slowly, words came back to me. That's... that's wonderful. You know that I love you too. When you told me that, it was wonderful. I wanted to run away with you and keep you safe, but I can't. So, we can't be together. He opened the car door and got out. Then he walked over to my side and opened the door. He took my hand and helped me out. Somehow. We were now at the door to my house. Duncan looked at me for a long moment. One last time. My heart was pounding wildly again as he leaned down to kiss me. I think he meant it to be a quick kiss, but passion ignited between us again. We were both breathing heavily when we finally managed to pull apart. Duncan then kissed the top of my head and hurried back to his car. I watched him drive away and then opened the door and stepped into the house. All my thoughts and emotions had been let loose now. No matter what, Duncan said, I knew we wouldn't be able to contain what was between us. Chapter 16 I suspected that my days of being able to concentrate in English class were over. The teacher's voice might as well have been white noise for all the sense I could make of it. I had always been aware of Duncan sitting beside me, but now he was my entire focus. I couldn't look at him without remembering our kisses the day before. All I could think about was him kissing me and telling me that he loved me. When I looked at him, he would look away. Then I would feel his eyes on me when I was trying to pay attention to Mr. Gates. Duncan was the first one out of his seat when the bell rang. He was nowhere to be seen at lunch. I was in such a state that I really wasn't able to calm down the rest of the day. I didn't know what to do with all my nervous energy, so I decided to walk home, even though the weather had turned chilly. Barely ten minutes into my walk, Duncan pulled up beside me. He didn't have to say a word. My pulse was already racing as I got into his car. He drove silently to my house. We still didn't speak as we walked up the driveway, and Duncan followed me into the house. He looked at me in a way that made me feel weak with desire. I went to the office during lunch. I'm transferring to another English class. Then he was kissing me. It was what I had been waiting for all day. We found our way to the couch as we continued to kiss. I couldn't get enough of Duncan. It had never been like this with anyone else. He pulled back several times, but in the next instant he would go right back to kissing me. Finally, 
He stood up and walked a few feet away from me. It took both of us a while to catch our breath. Susanna, he said in that husky voice that made me want to kiss him again. This is why I can't be around you. I can't control myself. I swore that I would go straight home, but here I am. I'm glad you're here. It will be easier tomorrow when we don't see each other, he said. The only difference was that Duncan was no longer in English class with me. Caitlin had rehearsals all week, because her play was on Friday. Duncan once again found me during my walk and drove me home. We started passionately kissing even before we entered the house. On Thursday, he left a note in my locker to meet him by his car after school. There was no need for me to pretend that I was walking home. I expected him to finally admit that he wasn't going to stay away from me. I got an after-school job. I start Monday. Why? I asked. It's what I have to do. We have to stop seeing each other. Duncan, this is ridiculous. Nothing will happen if people know that we're together. Even as he was insisting that we couldn't be together, he was leaning in to kiss me. Nothing seemed to be able to get in the way of our passion for each other. On Friday, it was only the arrival of my parents that ended our marathon kissing session. Even if we hadn't still been breathless when my mom walked into the living room, my flushed cheeks would have alerted her to what had been going on. Duncan, Mom said. We haven't seen you here for a while. Mom, we, uh, we were just, um, uh, we're going to Caitlin's play tonight. Mom looked at me in amusement. Oh, is Duncan staying for dinner? No, thank you. I actually have to go now. I'll see you at the play, Susanna. See you later, I said, as Dad walked into the living room. Bye, Mrs. Hastings. Mr. Hastings. Duncan couldn't leave fast enough. Susie? Dad began. Mom stopped him. Remember that Duncan saved her life. Yes, and I'm grateful. But having a boy over when we're not home... Let's go make dinner. Mom pulled him out of the room. Remember when you were seventeen? Yes, I heard Dad say. That's what I'm afraid of. Dad's mood didn't improve after dinner, when I came downstairs wearing my pink mini dress, even though he'd seen me wear it before. I was also wearing the necklace that Duncan and his mom had given me for my birthday. Isn't it a little cold to be wearing that? I have a coat, Dad. Okay, I'll drive Susie to the play. You stay here and relax, and I'll be right back. The plan was for Caitlin and Alex to drive me home after the play. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I was hoping that Duncan would volunteer instead. My locker was near the entrance to the school, so I left my coat there. Then I spotted Duncan in the hallway. He muttered something under his breath as I approached him. Hi, I said. You had to make this as difficult as possible, didn't you? No, you're the one who's making things difficult. This afternoon you couldn't stop kissing me, and now I'm supposed to pretend like it never happened. Here they come. I guess it's showtime, I muttered sarcastically. Susanna and Duncan, hello. Anna greeted us in her usual mature manner. Hi, we both said to Anna and Brad. Brad looked me up and down, but he had apparently learned his lesson at the dance. He didn't say anything about my dress or my legs. Alex had joined us by this time. Ben walked up to Duncan. Hey, man. Where you been? Were you sick? No, I transferred to another English class. Anna raised her eyebrows at this news. Why would you do that? Gates gives too much homework. Really? Anna said. I thought that you would find the curriculum here easy after you did so well at Briar Oak. I got a job, Duncan explained without missing a beat. Oh, is that why you haven't been sitting with us at lunch? Have you been taking naps in your car? Anna asked. I decided to leave you to your girl talk. Anna turned to me. What an unusual necklace. Is that a lightning bolt? I heard about that, Alex exclaimed. Caitlin said that Duncan saved your life. It happened by accident. 
Duncan was clearly uncomfortable talking about it. Yeah, Caitlin said that you tripped and knocked Susie out of the way right when the lightning struck. How lucky is that? Very lucky, Anna agreed. We should find some seats, Duncan said. Got it covered. Alex led us to a row of reserved seats. It helps to have connections. Duncan tried to sit on the end, but Anna somehow maneuvered it that Brad ended up on the end with Anna next to him and Duncan next to her. I was between Duncan and Alex. Never been to a play before, Brad said. I hear that Caitlin is quite the actress. Anna leaned over Duncan to talk to me. She seemed to be oblivious to the tension emanating from him. Yes, she's always the lead. She's never wanted to be anything else besides an actress. I've always known what I want to do, too. I waited for her to say what career she wanted, but she left it at that. The lights began to dim, and we all looked toward the stage. The curtain opened, and the play began. For a while, I got lost in the story and the performances. It was fun to see my classmates acting out these parts. Caitlin was just as good of an actress as I remembered from her last play. So, now you can predict when lightning is going to strike. I sat perfectly still. I knew from my past experiences with Duncan that Anna wasn't speaking aloud. I was hearing her voice in my head. I know that you can hear me, Duncan. I'm trying to watch the play. When did you start having premonitions? That's new. Anna continued the conversation regardless of his objection. I told you, it was an accident. It was just a coincidence that the lightning struck then. You can tell that story to those who don't know about our abilities. I wonder if Susanna would believe you if you told her the truth. You bought her that necklace, didn't you? Caitlin said that she had a birthday recently. Why would you assume that? Duncan asked. I've seen the way you look at her. It's the same way you used to look at me. You're imagining things. Why are you denying it? Anna said. I've seen how she looks at you too. Why don't you just go ahead and ask her out? What business is that of yours? I just want you to be happy, Anna said. Happy? You want me to be happy? Why don't you tell that to someone who doesn't know you? It's true, Anna insisted. Is that why you followed me here? To do your part to make me happy? Or was it to finish what you started? I came to make amends. I feel better already. His sarcasm was not lost on Anna. Look, Duncan, I know that I can't take back what I did, but I'm sorry I hurt you. At the time, I didn't know that it would be like that. I realize now what a terrible thing I did. Do you really think that I'm going to fall for your lies again? That I'm going to believe anything that you say? If you really want to make amends, then go back where you came from and leave me alone. They fell silent after that. Neither one of them seemed to have realized that I had heard their entire conversation. I wondered what Anna had done to make Duncan mistrust her so much. She had sounded sincerely sorry, but he wouldn't give her a chance to prove it. I had heard no reason for Duncan's secrecy about our relationship. She had even encouraged him to ask me out. When the play ended, we all applauded enthusiastically. As people began to file out of the auditorium, we went up to Caitlin to offer our personal congratulations on her performance. She looked so happy and excited. It was the complete opposite of Duncan's muted smile and withdrawn attitude. After telling Caitlin that her performance was impressive, he said goodnight to us and left. Caitlin and Alex drove me home. All that weekend, I wondered what I should do about Duncan. On Monday, I asked Caitlin if I could come over after school. I waited until I thought that Duncan had left for his job, and then I told Caitlin that I needed to go talk to his mom for a little bit. What's going on? Caitlin asked. I'll be right back. This shouldn't take long. I don't care how long it takes. I just want to know what's going on. I know you came here as an excuse to be close by Duncan's house. Are you keeping secrets from me again? Duncan and I kissed. What? Caitlin squealed. When did this happen? Last week, I admitted. 
How could you not tell me that? That's great. It was great. It was amazing, actually. But now Duncan is freaking out because of Anna. He's totally paranoid. And you're going to talk to his mom about it? Doubt showed on Caitlin's face. Are you sure that's a good idea? Not really, but I don't know what else to do. I'm worried about him. He said that he's starting his job today, so it's the perfect time to go over there. Okay, she said. Well, good luck. I'll be waiting to find out how it went. I forced myself to walk down to Duncan's house and knock on the door before I lost my nerve. His mom opened the door and smiled at me. Susanna, I was wondering when you'd visit us again. It's been too long. Unfortunately, Duncan's not home, but let me make you some tea. I stepped inside. I actually wanted to talk to you, if that's okay. I need to leave before Duncan gets home. Of course. She led me into the kitchen and motioned for me to sit down. What's the matter, Susanna? Okay, I know this is weird, but I have no one else to turn to about this. I nervously played with my hair. Duncan and I... Well, Duncan and I... A happy smile lit up her face. I knew he would come around sooner or later. Encouraged, I continued. See, that's just it. Now he says we can't be together because of Anna. I don't know why. She seems to have moved on just fine. I mean, she's even dating my ex-boy. The expression on her face stopped me cold. Her smile had been replaced by a look of utter horror. Anna is here? I was completely taken by surprise. Duncan didn't tell you? How long has she been here? A few weeks, I said. She's become a friend. We sit together at lunch. Have you told her about your abilities? She asked this with an intense urgency. No, Duncan made such a big deal about keeping that a secret. He's become completely paranoid. Duncan is not wrong to fear for your safety. In fact, you shouldn't even be here now. I don't understand. Why are you both so afraid of her? What did she do to Duncan? Mrs. McKenna looked like she was on the verge of panic. I'm sorry, Susanna. I have to ask you to leave. I had no choice but to do what she said. She walked me to the door. Please be careful around Anna. She's not at all what she seems to be. Our meeting had not turned out like I planned. I now had more questions than answers. I walked back to Caitlin's house, completely confused and disturbed by Mrs. McKenna's reaction to the news of Anna's presence in town. Chapter 17 I spoke to Duncan the following morning, before school began. I had been waiting by his locker for him. I'm so sorry. I didn't know it was a secret. It's okay. I shouldn't have kept it from her. I feel bad that I upset her, I said. I just thought that you were... Overreacting. Maybe now you'll take it seriously. Did Mom convince you? I don't know what to think anymore, I admitted. I haven't had any problems with Anna. I'm trying to keep it that way. His eyes lingered on me as the warning bell rang. Bye, Susanna. Bye. I was glad that he wasn't angry with me. I missed seeing him in English, although it made it easier to pay attention in class. Duncan was not in the cafeteria either. I had no idea what he was doing for lunch. After school was the worst. I made dinner and did my homework, and I was so restless that I even cleaned the house. That evening seemed like an eternity. The next day I went to the mall with Caitlin after school because I had decided that I needed to get a job. I planned to apply everywhere that they had a help wanted sign, and I immediately spotted one at a clothing store. Cool, Caitlin said. They have cute stuff. If you work here, you'll get discounts on clothes. After I asked for an application, the manager asked me when I could start. Well, anytime after school or on the weekend. How about today? Well, sure, I guess. I just have to call my mom and let her know. Great, I'm short-staffed. One of my best employees got another job after she finished her degree. I have one gone on her honeymoon and two out with the flu. She looked as frazzled as she sounded. Wow, 
That was easy. Call me later, Susie. Okay, bye, Caitlin. Thanks for the ride. The manager led me into the back room. Here, fill out these forms, and then I'll work with you and show you what to do. First, I took out my cell phone and called Mom to tell her the news. She told me to call her back later and let her know what time to pick me up. My first day on the job went well. It was a relief to stay busy, because it helped me not to think about how much I missed Duncan. Last week had been so wonderful between us, but now we were apart again. My dad was delighted that I was working. Now he wouldn't have to worry about me having boys over after school. I found that between work, dinner, and homework, I barely even had time to talk to Caitlin on the phone. One of her drama friends lived close to the mall. The next day I rode his bus after school and got off at his stop to walk to the mall. It wasn't until the following week that I ran into Duncan at the mall. I was on break and going to get a smoothie at the food court. He was walking away from the food court with a Pepsi in his hand. Hi, Susanna. Hi, Duncan. I couldn't help smiling at him because it was so good to see him. He smiled back at me. Doing some shopping? No, I actually work here now. He didn't look pleased to hear that. So do I. I hadn't known that when I applied for my job. He told me that he worked at the shoe store, and I told him which clothing store I worked at. So, how have you been? I couldn't take my eyes off him. It seemed like much longer than a week since the last time I had seen him. Good. How about you? Okay. This polite conversation was strange after how close we had become. Well, I've got to get back to work. See you, Susanna. Yeah, see you. Duncan walked down the corridor and turned to look at me. When he saw that I was still watching him, he waved and continued on his way. With a sigh, I went to the food court to get my smoothie. I didn't see Duncan again until Caitlin's birthday party that weekend. Anna was there, without Brad. Caitlin didn't like Brad, and the feeling was mutual. She hadn't invited him, and Anna hadn't complained. It was me, Duncan, Anna, Alex, and some other kids from school. Many of them were from Caitlin's drama class. Including Caitlin, there were 15 of us at the party. We were hanging out in her basement where everything had been set up for the party. Her mom had gone to a movie with a friend. Remember, I'll be back in a couple of hours. She looked sternly at Caitlin. No drinking. Caitlin rolled her eyes. Don't worry. We're going to trash the house, but we'll be sober while we do it. Her mom's friend laughed. Come on, let the kids have their fun. We were listening to music, talking, and eating snacks. A couple of the boys were playing a video game. It was so much more intimate and mellow than the party I had been to with Brad. Well, Duncan, I'm leaving. I was sitting in a chair on the other side of the room. The music was loud, but I heard Anna as clearly as if she had spoken right into my ear. She was sitting on the couch next to Duncan. The girl that had been sitting on the other side of him had gotten up to get something to drink. Even if she had still been sitting there, she wouldn't have heard what Anna was saying. Anna was communicating with her thoughts. Now? Duncan also spoke with his thoughts. Soon. Anna placed her hand on his knee. Let's go somewhere private and say goodbye properly. He removed her hand. Not interested. Okay, then I'll leave you to your exciting new lifestyle. Just give me what I came here for. To make amends? I'm losing patience with you, Duncan. Let's just drop the act. I want what you stole from me. What I stole from you. You're the thief. Do you really want to play games with me, Duncan? Again, you're the one who plays games. I mean it. You'd better give it back to me. Anna, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, Duncan. Let's play. The room suddenly went completely silent. I felt dizzy for a moment. When my head cleared, I couldn't believe my eyes. People were slumped where they had been sitting or sprawled on the floor. Anna and Duncan were the only ones who were unaffected. I jumped out of my chair. What happened to everybody? They're just taking a little nap. The question is, why aren't you? Anna turned back to Duncan. 
You didn't tell me that your new girlfriend is one of us. Anna, what the hell are you doing? Bring them out of it, Duncan shouted. Calm down. They're fine. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. You have something that belongs to me. I'd like it back. I was on my knees beside Caitlin and Alex. They seemed to be asleep. Caitlin? Caitlin! I shook her, but she didn't respond. What's wrong with them? We have to call 911. Release them, Duncan yelled. He seemed to be furious. Anna laughed. <laughs> I will, once you give me what I want. Were they crazy? They seemed to be in some kind of battle of wills. I took out my cell phone out of my pocket, but it flew out of my hand and smashed on the floor. I stared at it in astonishment. Leave her alone. She has nothing to do with this. Be a good boy, Duncan, and go fetch my crystal. I don't know what you're talking about. I'd had enough. Someone had to get help for Caitlin and the others. I began to walk upstairs to use the kitchen phone. The door to the basement slammed shut before I could reach it. The knob turned, but it wouldn't open, no matter how hard I pushed at it. I walked back down the stairs and stood staring at Anna. She looked at me with hate in her eyes. I'm not letting your girlfriend go until I get my crystal back. She's not my girlfriend, and I don't know anything about your crystal. Do you really think that you can fool me? I saw what was between you that first day I found you with her. You don't waste any time, Anna said bitterly. Now give it to me, or I'll kill Susanna. Anna, Duncan pleaded. A chair suddenly came flying toward me. I put my arms up in a protective stance, but the chair stopped inches from me and dropped to the ground. Very good, Duncan. I see you've recovered, but you're still not strong enough to stop me. Anna stood very still. She seemed to be concentrating very hard. Duncan ran up the stairs and tried to open the door. I stood where I had been frozen in shock. Now I felt something change in the air, and I looked at Anna. Darkness swirled around her. I sensed power emanating from her, but it felt wrong. In response, I started to feel a strength I never knew I had. I squared my shoulders in determination as raw power surged through me. Duncan turned away from the door in frustration. I can't get it. There was a crash as all the snacks and drinks on the table slid to the floor as it was lifted into the air. Then the table and the couch both came hurtling toward me and dropped harmlessly to the floor. No, Anna screamed. This is not over, Duncan. Then she pushed him out of her way as she stormed out the door, which opened easily for her. Chapter 18 Duncan was staring at me like he had never seen me before. The silence stretched between us as we stood frozen in place. I seemed to have forgotten how to speak or move. Duncan was the first to break the spell as he suddenly hurried down the stairs. Are you okay? Hysteria threatened to overwhelm me. Not really. Are you hurt? He examined with worried eyes. No, but it was close. If you hadn't stopped her, I shuddered. Susanna. That was all you. I barely had enough strength to stop the chair she threw at you. I'm much weaker than she thinks, but you must be very powerful. She couldn't touch you. I stared at him. What do you mean? You were immune to her sleeping spell. Then the furniture would have crushed you if you hadn't stopped it. Me? I didn't do anything. Then I remembered the sense of power I had felt before Anna's attack. How? How can that be possible? Duncan regarded me with those pale blue eyes. It must have been lying dormant all this time until you were in danger, like a reflex action. I heard a groan behind me and looked back to see the group stirring. Caitlin! I cried and ran to her. Are you okay? Susie? What happened? I didn't answer yet as I helped her stand up. What could I say in front of everyone that wouldn't make me sound crazy? I looked to Duncan for help, but he seemed to be at a loss, too. Caitlin took in the state of the room. 
I didn't expect her next question. Where's Anna? She left. Duncan's curt reply was the only answer Caitlin needed. She then gave one of her best performances ever. (laughs) She got us good. Caitlin actually laughed. Who? Alex's confusion was mirrored in the eyes of everyone in the room. Anna, she hypnotized us. A girl from Caitlin's drama class spoke up. What? That's ridiculous. That's what I said when Anna told me she could hypnotize people. Guess she decided to prove me wrong. Another girl took up the argument. That's impossible. She couldn't hypnotize all of us. How else can you explain nobody remembering how the furniture got over there? She hypnotized us into moving it. I bet she got the whole thing on video. She's probably posting it on YouTube right now. Cool, Alex said. I can't wait to see it. Guys, please help me move it back and clean up this mess before my mom gets home. I gave Caitlin a grateful look. With all of us working together, it took only minutes to set everything right again. The party continued with cake and ice cream. It was surreal to be singing Happy Birthday and watching Caitlin blow out the candles after what just happened. Caitlin opened her presents and smiled as if she didn't have a care in the world. I knew that she was dying to hear the real story, but it had to wait until all of her guests left. Duncan and I pretended to leave so that Alex would go home too. We walked down the street and sat in Duncan's car until Caitlin came out of her house. She couldn't call me on my cell phone because Anna had destroyed it. Caitlin led us back into the basement. Mom's upstairs taking a shower. Talk fast. Duncan and I told the story as if we had rehearsed it. When one would falter with the words, the other would finish the sentence and continue the story. Caitlin's eyes grew wide with horror as Duncan described Anna's attack on me. What are we going to do? I don't know, I said. We better go before your mom sees us. Caitlin walked us to the door. We heard a hairdryer running as we passed the stairs to the upper floor. What's this crystal that Anna wants? I don't know, Duncan said. Whatever it is, I don't have it. I'm so sorry about your party. It's not your fault, Susie. Anyway, it's a birthday I'll never forget. At least the parts I can remember. We said goodnight and walked back to Duncan's house. He was going to drive me home. What are we going to do? I looked around, fearing that Anna would attack us at any moment. I think we're okay for now. That must have taken a lot out of her. She's going to need to rest and get her strength back, Duncan said. Then what? Is she going to keep coming after us? She doesn't believe that you don't have her crystal. Let's go talk to mom. Maybe she can figure something out. We entered the house and found Mrs. McKenna in the kitchen making tea. She watched us approach with solemn eyes. What's happened? Why is Susanna here? You know that's not safe for her. Nowhere is safe for her. Anna's come after her. Duncan told his mother the whole story while I sat wearily in my chair. She seemed to wilt as she listened to his account of Anna's attack on me. I'm so sorry, Susanna. You've been caught in the middle, and it's all my fault. It's my fault, Duncan began, but his mom kept talking over him. I didn't think it through. I just acted on instinct. I was still confused, but Duncan looked at her in astonishment. You mean you took her crystal? I had to. I had to stop her before she became unstoppable. He put his head in his hands. I can't believe this. What is it? I asked. Why is it so important to her? It's called the Crystal of Devotion. As far as we know, it's the only one of its kind. It allows the one who possesses it to take power from another. That's how she did it? I stared from mother to son. Did what? She was stealing Duncan's abilities. What? How was that possible? I asked. I didn't know either, until I stumbled onto a reference about the crystal of devotion during my research. It explained what had happened to Duncan. I knew that Anna must have it, and that I had to destroy it. So it's gone? Duncan's voice was strained. No. I was planning to destroy it, but I couldn't. You mean, it's unbreakable? 
Duncan stood up and began to pace. No, I mean that I couldn't bring myself to do it. I had this very strong feeling that I shouldn't break it. How does it work? He looked at the floor as he asked this. The giver must be emotionally open to the receiver. Mrs. McKenna gave Duncan a sympathetic look. The conduit is love. There was silence as we all took this in. Duncan had been in love with Anna, and she had used it against him. Duncan's voice interrupted my thoughts. We'd better go. Susanna is tired. Yes, Mrs. McKenna agreed. The battle with Anna required a lot of energy. We didn't have any idea what to do about Anna. Duncan told me that he and his mom would figure something out, but he didn't look convinced. He started the car and backed out of the driveway. How did you find out that she was stealing your abilities? I asked. I started to lose them. It was for short stretches of time at first. Anna and I would be sharing our thoughts, and I would blank out on hers. They would fade in and out. Then sometimes I'd be talking with Mom that way, and she couldn't hear me. I got physically weak, too, and I started getting sick more often. Anna was concerned at first, but then she started coming up with excuses of why she couldn't come over. I thought maybe she had found someone else. Did she? Yes, but it was worse than I thought. Anna wasn't in school that day. She texted me that she was sick, and I thought she had caught what I'd had the week before. But then I saw that Tyler wasn't at school either. He was always flirting with her, and I could tell that she liked it. I decided to go to her house and see if she was really sick. I saw Tyler pull out of her driveway just as I was driving up her street, and I pulled over and ducked down. Then I started to drive home, but I ended up parking on the next street over from hers. I sat there working up the nerve to confront her. I started driving back, but I saw her turn out of her street in the opposite direction. So I followed her. Now that he had started talking, I wanted to hear the entire story. Where was she going? To a middle-class neighborhood. No mansions there. A man in a business suit answered the door when she got to his house. He was older, I'm guessing about 30. I went around the house, peeking in the windows. I found them in a bedroom in the back. They were kissing. I thought they were going to... <clears throat> Duncan cleared his throat. She must have used the same sleeping spell on him that she did tonight, because he was completely out. I waited for him to continue. He looked tired now, too. He kept his eyes on the road the entire time he was talking. She held her hands over him. There was... There was this energy around him. I could see it. I think it was his... Aura, maybe. Then she somehow drew it to her. It expanded around her and got really thin around him. After that, I couldn't see the energy anymore. He woke up and tried to kiss her again. She said something to him, and he followed her out of the room. I waited until she left, and then I followed the guy to his job. I guess it was his lunch break. I hung around and found out his name was Keith. The next day I had Mom call me off of school. I went to the guy's office, but he never showed. I made up a story and asked for him. They said he was out sick. I was starting to put it all together. We had now arrived at my house, and Duncan idled the car. I went back a few days later and saw him walk out of the building at noon with some co-workers. They walked to a restaurant down the street. They were walking in when I called his name inside my head. He turned around, but I kept walking. That's how I knew what Anna was doing. I confronted her that day and she didn't deny it. She claimed that she didn't know it had been making me sick. Duncan, that's... Words failed me. She's the only girl that... He looked at me then. We were lovers, Susanna. And the whole time we were together, she was slowly siphoning off my power. I hugged him and he held on to me. Reluctantly, we got out of the car and walked to my door. Get some rest, Susanna. Get your strength back. The unspoken part seemed to hang in the air between us, because you're going to need it. Chapter 19 I had been expecting something more impressive. The Crystal of Devotion was not even very big, 
which made it the perfect size for a pendant that hung on a silver chain. It looked like something that anyone could buy at the mall. Certainly, it wasn't the kind of thing that I would expect a rich girl like Anna to wear. It was hard to believe that she had tried to kill me over something that looked so ordinary. I remember this. I've seen Anna wear this before, Duncan said. So have I, Mrs. McKenna said. That's why I knew what I was looking for. How did you get into her house? It was easy enough to read the housekeeper's mind and learn the security code. Wow. Caitlin was listening in fascination to this conversation between Duncan and his mom. She had been invited to this meeting, since she was now involved in this after Anna attacked me at her birthday party. Amazingly, I had slept through the night as if I didn't have a care in the world. The fight with Anna had tired me out more than I had realized. Now, I was sitting in Mrs. McKenna's kitchen and sipping tea while she showed us the crystal. I can't see another way out of this. Duncan said. We have to give it back to her. No, Mrs. McKenna and I protested in unison. We have to. It's the only way she'll leave Susanna alone. I don't think that's going to happen, Caitlin said. She's been obsessed with Susie from the beginning. Think about it, Duncan. You dumped her. A girl like Anna isn't used to that. Now she knows that you like Susie, and she can't stand it. I'm afraid she's right. Mrs. McKenna's eyes, the exact same shade of pale blue as Duncan's, were filled with concern. That also rules out our other option of moving again. We can't keep running from her. Maybe I can make some kind of deal with her. Caitlin pointed out the obvious. Once you give her the crystal, you have nothing left to bargain with. I think I should keep it. They all turned their attention to me. Duncan spoke. What? The crystal. This is the first place she'll look for it. Maybe if she doesn't find it, she'll think one of her other victims has it. Duncan immediately began to argue. It's too dangerous. We've already decided that I'm in danger. Anyway, you said she couldn't touch me. Susanna is the most powerful of all of us, Mrs. McKenna said, almost talking to herself. I don't like it. Nobody likes it, Duncan, but we have to keep it from her. I instinctively knew this to be true. I still think we should destroy it. That'll just make her even more mad, Caitlin said. So that's it? Duncan asked. We just pass it on to Susanna and hope that Anna gives up? The main thing is to act normal, Caitlin instructed us. You guys moving is probably what tipped her off in the first place that you were the ones who took it. Everybody keep to their normal schedules. Different is what makes you look guilty. Caitlin left shortly after that to go to a movie with Alex. Mrs. McKenna went upstairs to continue working on her latest painting. Duncan and I sat in the living room and continued talking. I had put on the necklace and hidden the crystal beneath my shirt. I didn't really expect Anna to come bursting through the door, but I wasn't taking any chances. So. You didn't tell me that we can move objects with our minds, too. According to Anna, that's a much rarer ability than reading minds. I didn't even know that I could do it until she insisted that I try. She had me practice every day for two weeks. Staring at that feather made me feel ridiculous. But Anna kept urging me to give it more time. She was so excited when I succeeded in lifting it off the table. Now I know why it was so important to her. That's how she got that power? From you? I asked. Not all of it. I was never able to lift something as heavy as a couch. I think that's a combination of what she took from several different people. Who knows how many she had to steal from to get that power. She said something about you recovering. Does that mean you're getting your ability back? It takes time. But Mom says I'll build it all back up again. She read that there are rumors of rare instances where a person's power was permanently drained by the crystal but nobody knows if that's true. The ones who increase their power, though, keep it for life. How much more does she need? I couldn't understand why she was so obsessed with getting more. Need has nothing to do with it. With Anna, it's all about what she wants. Maybe we should try talking to her dad, I suggested. I told you, Susanna. He doesn't believe in any of it. 
We could just say that she's stalking you. Maybe he would make her leave Ohio. He's probably not even here, Duncan said. You mean she's here by herself? I couldn't imagine my parents allowing me to do something like that. I'm sure he's arranged for some kind of guardian to look after her while she's here. Well, at least we don't have to be apart anymore. I really missed you, Duncan. I missed you too. I couldn't stop thinking about you, Susanna. I thought that he was going to kiss me then, but he talked about our plans for after school tomorrow. He was going to drive me to the mall and drive me home after work. The less time you spend by yourself, the better. The following day, Duncan was back to sitting with us during lunch. We waited to see what Anna would do and breathed a sigh of relief when she went to sit with Brad and his group. Alex stopped by to tell us that he had asked Anna about hypnotizing us. I couldn't find the video on YouTube. She said she pressed the wrong button and it didn't record. Seemed pretty mad about it, too. Alex! His buddies were calling him from the table where he always sat. He looked at Caitlin apologetically. Go ahead. She waved him on. I'll see you later. Nobody knew that I had worn the crystal of devotion to school. I had been uneasy with the thought of leaving it at home when both my parents were at work. In the end, I had put it on and hid it under my sweater. It was my responsibility to keep it safe, and I had quickly become protective of it. For four days, Anna left all of us alone. Duncan and I settled into a routine of school and work. Several times when we were alone together in his car, I had thought that he was going to kiss me, but he seemed to be holding himself in check. I was just glad that we were able to spend time together again, so my disappointment was short-lived. It was on Thursday night, when I was taking out the garbage, that Anna showed up in my yard. It's time that you and I talked. Hold on a minute. I went to get the next garbage can, but it started rolling up my driveway. Soon, all the cans were by the curb. You can't do that. If somebody saw that, it's done. And nobody saw it. You could have at least said thank you, but you weren't raised with manners, apparently, Anna said. Well, excuse me for being rude, but you tried to kill me a few days ago, so etiquette is not really at the top of my list right now. Good, you remember. Now just give me back my crystal, and we can avoid any further unpleasantness. I don't know what... Anna cut me off. Apparently, you did forget one thing about me. I can read minds, and Caitlin has no clue how to shield her thoughts from me. I didn't find it in your house, so that means you must be wearing it. I was going to ask how she got in my house, but I realized that locks meant nothing to Anna. She could just think them open. It was bizarre to know that I had this same ability. Don't you see how many problems it's caused in your life? You lost Duncan because of it. I lost Duncan because of you. I stared at her. He didn't even know me when you broke up. He was upset and not thinking straight. He would have come back to me eventually. I gave him some time to cool off and start to miss me. Instead, I find him here with you chasing after him. Then you expect me to just stand back and let you have my crystal too. I was walking down the driveway and into my backyard as she followed me. I turned around to face her again. Look, Anna, let's just give it back to me. I can't. Duncan isn't here to protect you now. I'm giving you one last chance to give it back. My mouth had gone dry, and my heart was pounding with fear. Mutely, I shook my head. Anna lunged at me. I wasn't sure if she was trying to physically take the crystal, or if she had just lost her temper. Instinctively, I pushed with my mind. Anna stumbled, but held her balance. Her eyes narrowed. Well, well, what have we here? No wonder Duncan is drooling over you. I thought he was your hero. But it seems you worked together to stop that furniture from hitting you. My arms had been at my sides the entire time. Now I raised one to pull the crystal out from under my sweater. You've done enough damage with this, and you don't deserve it back. I think it's time for you to leave now. Without waiting for a reply, I turned around to walk toward the house. That's when I felt a force behind me. 
and I stopped and turned around. The basketball hoop was leaning inches from my head. It had been suspended in the process of crashing into the back of my skull. I watched as it gently straightened back into place. Anna's mouth was open, and her green eyes were staring at me with disbelief. I don't just mean my yard, either. It's time for you to leave Ohio. Then I continued walking back into my house and closed the door. Chapter 20 I was at work the day after Anna's visit when I heard her talking to Duncan. Luckily, I was on my break when it happened. Duncan and I always try to take our breaks together now. I was on my way to meet him when I heard Anna's voice in my head. I sat down on a bench beside the fountain and listened. We need to talk. I already told you that I don't have your crystal, Duncan said. I know, Anna replied calmly. Susanna does. Why would you think that? She showed it to me last night. Anna answered in the same even and reasonable tone. She what? Duncan asked. That's why we're speaking this way. I knew you'd freak out. Duncan was still denying everything. You're making this up. You're trying to trick me, and I'm not falling for it. Duncan, please give me some credit. All I had to do was listen to Caitlin's thoughts to find out Susanna has my crystal. That's not the only secret you've been keeping from me. You never told me how powerful Susanna is. When I tried to take the crystal from her, she pushed me back with her mind. So you came to make a deal? No, Anna said. I came to convince you to come back to California with me. He was incredulous. After what you did to me? You expect me to get back together with you? Nothing that I did was permanent. You still have your abilities, and they'll be back at full strength soon. In fact, you can become even more powerful. Like you, by stealing from other people. Only the one, Anna said. Susanna is more powerful than anyone I've ever met. She had her back turned and still sensed what was coming at her. She stopped it in mid-air before she even turned around. You can have her power for yourself, and she'll still have hers. Just use the crystal. If you think that I would do that to Susanna, then you don't know me at all. What's the big deal? I don't understand why you're making it out to be some horrible thing. Just think of it, Duncan. We won't have to follow any rules anymore. We can do whatever we want. You were happy with me once and it can be that way again. You stole my power and cheated on me with Tyler. Worst of all, you tried to kill Susanna. Nothing can ever be the way it was. I don't love you anymore. It's your loss, Duncan. In that case, just bring me the crystal. And you'll leave Susanna alone? I promise, Anna said. I've heard your promises before, and I don't trust you to keep this one either. Then we have a real problem. Anna, Duncan shouted. You made your choice, Duncan. I'll see you when you bring me the crystal. She must have left, because I no longer heard their voices in my head. It wasn't long before an agitated Duncan found me. I stood up to greet him, a happy smile playing over my lips, because he had told Anna that he didn't want to be with her. He strode toward me, his eyes blazing with a pale blue fire. I was sure that he was going to kiss me. His hand snaked beneath my hair and slid under the chain at the back of my neck. He pulled it out from beneath my sweater until the crystal was revealed. You have it on you. What were you thinking? Duncan fumed. It's the only way to keep it safe, I reasoned. Why didn't you tell me that you saw Anna last night? I handled it. My confidence was soaring as I continued to best Anna. You can't keep things like that from me. Anna was just here. I know. I heard you talking. But we were. He gazed at me with wonder. You heard us communicating that way. Every word. Just like at Caitlin's party and at the play. That's remarkable. I didn't even try to reach you. He came out of his reverie and remembered that he was upset. She said something about attacking you again. I stopped her. You don't have to worry because I think she knows that she can't beat me. That's why she's trying to get you to bring the crystal to her. I do have to worry, he insisted. 
She's already tried to kill you twice. She failed, and now she failed to change your mind, too. Pretty soon she'll get tired of trying and give up. I hope it's that easy. He looked at his watch. Damn, my break is almost over. I'll see you after work. Yeah, I have to get back to you. See you later. I was in a great mood the rest of the evening. Everything was going well between us, and I felt more confident and sure of myself than I ever had before. I was holding my own against Anna, and that made me feel strong. And Duncan noticed my contentment as he drove me home from the mall. He pulled into my driveway and smiled at me. I smiled back and gazed at him, marveling that he had come into my life as a vision in a dream, and then altered my reality when he awakened my hidden abilities. My smile faded as something in his eyes shifted and changed the way he was looking at me. My lips parted as Duncan drew closer to me and kissed me with all the passion I remembered from our previous encounters. My longing for him made me respond with an intensity that I had never known before. Before long, we were both breathless. Duncan, I gasped. I waited for my breath to steady. What took you so long? I didn't want to get distracted. You can distract me anytime. He sucked in a breath and looked away from me. Susanna. His voice wasn't quite steady. We can't forget that we have a very real threat to deal with. Yes, the big bad wolf. Well, she's huffed and she's puffed, and she still hasn't blown my house down. I hope you're right, he said. I hope she's finally met her match. We made plans to hang out tomorrow and said goodnight. I was so high on my kisses with Duncan that I practically floated into the house. My parents invited me to watch TV with them, but I wanted to be alone with all of my lovely, romantic thoughts. When my new cell phone rang, I recognized Anna's number. Briefly, I wondered how she had learned my new phone number, and then I realized that she could find out just about anything she wanted from reading people's minds. What do you want? No time for pleasantries, I see, Anna said. Since you already know what I want, I'll ask you what you want. Oh, you're going to bargain with me now? Don't bother offering me money, because the crystal is not for sale. Susanna, Susanna, she tisked. I'm not going to pay for my own property, you silly girl. This is the way it works. You take something from me, and I take something from you. I immediately looked and saw that my lightning necklace was still in my jewelry box. It was special to me and I would have hated to lose it to Anna. The question is, she continued, which one is more valuable to you? Whatever it is, you can keep it. I'm not giving up the crystal. Are you sure about that? Anna asked. Very. Well, I have to say I'm surprised. I guess you're not as good of a friend as Caitlin believed you were. I stood frozen in the grip of ice-cold terror. My lips could barely form the words I forced through them. What did you do to Caitlin? Go and find out. Then decide if the crystal is worth more than the lives of your friends. Chapter 21 Alex answered my frantic call to Caitlin's cell phone. I nearly fell over with relief when I found out that she was alive. I decided that I had to see her right away with my own eyes and told Alex that I was coming over. I called Duncan to go with me to Caitlin's house. He drove in silence, until I had finished telling him about Anna's threats. Do you think she was just trying to scare you? No. Caitlin was too upset to answer her phone. Something definitely happened. Caitlin met me at the door, and I pulled her into a fierce hug. We both started crying, and couldn't even talk for a while. There was already a box of tissues in the living room. Duncan and Alex sat awkwardly and waited for us to calm down. I began with an easy question. Where's your mom? She's on a date. Alex and I were too. What happened? I asked. First, I have to tell you that Alex knows everything, Caitlin said. After tonight, I couldn't keep it from him anymore. He deserved to know the truth. I understand. You shouldn't have to lie for me. Good. Then he can tell you what happened. She gave me a tremulous smile. 
I think I'll break down again if I start talking about it. It's okay. You just take it easy. I hoped that my smile was comforting. Seeing Caitlin this upset made me dread hearing the story. I turned to Alex and waited for him to begin. Well, Caitlin and I were going for a drive when we saw Anna standing by the side of the road. I figured her car had broken down and I was going to stop, but Caitlin wouldn't let me. She got upset and said to just keep going, but she wouldn't tell me why. Then the car started going faster. It, it just kept speeding up and the brakes wouldn't work. I could barely control it around the curves in the road. Oh my god! I stared at him in horror. He seemed almost as shaken as Caitlin while he told the rest of the story. We got up to the overlook, and the car kept speeding toward the railing. I thought we were going over. Caitlin whimpered beside me, and I grabbed her hand. Then it stopped, at the last minute. His eyes were haunted by the terror he and Caitlin had felt. I'm going to kill Anna. Duncan exploded out of his seat. She really did that? Alex looked to me for confirmation. It's my fault. I didn't take her seriously. It's not your fault. Caitlin was getting angry now. She pretended to be our friend, and then she tried to kill us. She wasn't trying to kill you. It was a warning for me. I told her what Anna had said over the phone. I'm so sorry that you guys got dragged into this. She can't get away with it. Caitlin was really fired up now. She has gotten away with it. I can't be there to protect you all the time, and she knows it. I'm going to give her the crystal. Susie, you can't do that. You see what she's like. Do you want her to get even more powerful? Caitlin turned to her boyfriend. Tell her, Alex. She'll be like the Terminator. I have no choice. She might actually kill you next time. I'm going to call mom, Duncan said. Mrs. McKenna came over right away. She even brought her tea in an attempt to soothe our nerves. It did make me feel better, but I think it was more that she herself had a calming presence. Duncan had filled her in on the situation, and we all wanted her opinion. By the expression on Alex's face, I could tell that seeing an adult take this seriously had made him realize that this was all real. There was nothing wrong with the car on the way down, he said to no one in particular. The brakes worked just fine. Mrs. McKenna gave him a sympathetic look. It's a lot to take in all at once. What should we do, Mom? Duncan hadn't touched his tea. He was anxious to take some kind of action. Susanna is right that we need to take the crystal to Anna. I should never have taken it in the first place. But she'll win, Caitlin protested. It's not a game, Mrs. McKenna said. It's not worth losing your lives. I'll give the crystal back to Anna. I think I should be the one to give it back to her, I ventured. She can't seem to hurt me no matter what she does. We seem to be pretty well matched in power. I think I should go with you, Duncan said. No, I might not be able to protect both of us if she tries something. I don't want you to go alone. He wouldn't back down. Mrs. McKenna interrupted our argument. She doesn't have to go alone. There is another way for the two of us to be there for her. I don't know, Duncan said. I'd still rather be there in person. I listened to this exchange in confusion. Then it dawned on me what they were talking about. The crystal. If Anna can use it to her advantage, then so can you. Mrs. McKenna looked hopeful, and her voice was tinged with excitement. I wasn't so sure about this plan. But I don't know how to use it. I'll guide you. But it's simple, really. The crystal does all of the work for you, she explained. Caitlin and Duncan switched seats so that he could sit beside me. Mrs. McKenna told me to hold my hands in front of Duncan's chest. Even though we weren't touching, it felt intimate enough to make me blush. Looking into his eyes made me feel as shy as the first day I met him. So I looked down at my hands and saw the shimmer of his aura. Cool! Caitlin exclaimed. The crystal began to glow, and the light it gave off intensified until it was dazzlingly brilliant. The surprised voices of the others faded, and everything else receded into the background. I was enveloped in the energy coming from Duncan. The well was not dry. It ran deeper than even he knew. 
I felt the strength and the power, and I saw what had been unseen. When I came out of my trance, I saw that the crystal had stopped glowing, and Duncan's aura was no longer visible. What was that? It didn't do that when I saw Anna use it. Duncan looked bewildered. Mrs. McKenna nodded. Yes, it's because you gave your power willingly to Susanna. She didn't trick you into it. The more pure the intent, the more powerful the crystal becomes. I was worried about Duncan. Are you okay? I didn't take too much, did I? I feel fine. What about you? I feel great, actually. I marveled. Refreshed. Like I got lots of sleep. I'm next. Mrs. McKenna shooed Duncan out of the way and sat down beside me. Um, I wasn't sure how to phrase my question. Um, you said that you have to be in love. Mrs. McKenna laughed. It's called the crystal of devotion. The key word is devotion. There are many kinds of love, Susanna. I see what a good person you are and how much you care for my son. I have grown quite fond of you in the time I've known you. I had become fond of her, too. She had been kind and sincere since the first moment I met her. Unlike Duncan, Mrs. McKenna had never been suspicious of me or my intentions. She was truly a person who judged everyone by their own individual actions. I repeated the same process that I had used with Duncan. The results were the same, and I now felt even stronger. I want to help, too. I was touched. That's sweet, Caitlin, but you don't have these abilities. Besides, I don't need any more. She turned to Mrs. McKenna. You told Susie that everybody has these abilities, but most people can't access them. Maybe Susie can access mine. It's a fascinating possibility. We won't know unless she tries. Come on, Susie. It's worth a shot, Caitlin said. Better to have too much power than not enough, especially when you're dealing with Anna. I didn't expect it to work, but it did. I felt myself connect with Caitlin's untapped abilities. They were raw and easily taken. When the transfer was complete, I felt more awake and aware than I ever had before in my life. You're not going to leave me out. I know you want to help, Alex, and I know there are all kinds of love, but you hardly know me. There's no way that you love me. But I love Caitlin, and you're the only one who can protect her from Anna. Caitlin stood up. You love me? Well, duh, Alex said flippantly, but his face was turning red. Caitlin threw her arms around him. I love you too. I couldn't help but smile at this wonderful development. Alex disentangled himself from Caitlin and sat down beside me. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. To my surprise, the crystal worked again. Alex had even more untapped power than Caitlin. When I was done, I felt like I could run a marathon without getting tired. I looked at all of them. Thank you. Just to be safe, Duncan said. Instead of calling Anna on the phone, I reached out for her with my mind until I found her. I'm coming over to bring you the crystal. She took a moment to answer. I knew you'd see it my way. Chapter 22 Duncan drove me to Anna's house. I gave him directions, even though I had never been there before. I simply knew where to go. Duncan still didn't want to leave me alone with Anna. He pulled into her driveway and drove slowly toward the house, which was set pretty far back from the road. The house was bigger than anyone else's home that I knew, but probably still not as large as her mansion in California. I'll call you to pick me up when I'm done, I said. I don't like this. Duncan, please. We already decided I would take care of it. I'll probably call you in five minutes. Then I'll wait in the driveway. No. I was remembering what Anna had done to Alex's car. I don't need a babysitter. It will make me look weak in front of Anna. It's already bad enough we're giving her the crystal. Promise me you won't come back until I call you. Fifteen minutes, Susanna. Then I'm coming back. Duncan, I protested. If it takes longer than fifteen minutes, then something's wrong. It's not like you're going to be hanging out. 
he reasoned. I was anxious to see Anna and get this over with, so I agreed with him and got out of the car. I waved at him and turned to walk up to the front door. It swung open on its own, just like in all those haunted house movies. Cute, I muttered. Anna greeted me as I stepped inside. Susanna, so glad you could drop by. Thinking about what she had done to Caitlin made me want to punch her. This is the deal. I give you the crystal, and you leave and never come back to Valley View. I believe the deal was that you give me back my crystal, and I don't kill your friends. I clenched my hands at my sides and took a breath. I wouldn't let her upset me any more than she already had. She was enjoying holding that over me way too much. Whatever. I don't have all night to argue with you. And here I thought that we were going to have a sleepover and talk about boys all night. I even sent my employees away so we wouldn't be disturbed. Where's your dad? I asked. Anna laughed, and the amusement even reached her eyes. Daddy? In Valley View? You can hardly find this place on the map. He did make sure that I have a guardian here, but she has a new boyfriend. It wasn't difficult to convince her to take the night off. How nice for you. Look, I'll just give you the crystal and leave you to your privacy. I grabbed hold of the chain in order to take it off and pulled my hand back with a yelp. The chain was burning hot to the touch. I looked at my hand, but it wasn't even red. It showed no signs of having been burned. Anna looked even more amused. Do you really think that you're going to fool me with a childish trick like that? You try it then. I don't know what happened. I stepped closer to her so that she could reach the necklace. The same thing happened to Anna's hand when she touched the crystal. She cried out and snatched her hand back. Her amusement had been replaced by anger. Stop that right now. I'm not going to play games with you. I'm not doing anything, I swear. It made no sense. The necklace was hot to the touch, yet it rested easily on my skin without burning it. Anna then tried to remove it by using the power of her mind. It lifted slightly and then zapped her, making her fall down on her butt. I had seen some kind of a spark shoot out of the crystal and hit Anna. This succeeded in making her furious. A huge chandelier came crashing down toward me, and I deflected it by flinging it at the wall. I mentally opened the front door, too, but it closed before I reached it. I spent only seconds opening it and watching it close, before I realized I wasn't getting out that way. I ran further into the house instead. Anna was throwing everything in her path at me as she followed me. Figurines, chairs, tables, and even plates and silverware went whizzing past me or crashing into the floor near me. Nothing even came close to hitting me. An entire set of knives clattered to the floor. I stopped and turned to face Anna. You're destroying your house. She was in the process of targeting me with a gun. Her arms jerked back as she pulled the trigger, and she fired into the ceiling. The gun flew out of her hand and shattered the window as it went through it like a missile and landed on the ground outside far back from the house. The clip detached from the gun, and the remaining bullets scattered in all directions. I could see it all in my mind's eye as it happened. I was ready for you this time. Anna raged, but she was tired. Expending so much energy in attacking me had exhausted her. She looked closely at me. What did you do? You're not even a little tired. She was right. All the power I had used in defending myself had barely made a dent in my energy level. I heard Duncan pounding on the front door and turned to go to him. You're not going anywhere with my crystal. I stopped and looked back at her. I can't take it off. You saw that for yourself. Susanna, Duncan shouted. You used my crystal, Anna realized. You used it on Duncan. That's why you haven't used up your reserves of power. You hypocrite. He gave it to me himself. I didn't steal it from him like you did. He let you take his power? The hurt look on Anna's face seemed genuine. The piano was hurtling toward me through the air. I mentally batted it away, as if it weighed no more than a frisbee. It dropped to the ground with a loud crack as its legs broke. 
I stared into the eyes of the one who wanted to destroy me and the ones that I loved. The heavy piano rose into the air once again and floated slowly toward Anna. She focused on it, but it didn't alter its course. Anna was temporarily out of power. I could see it as fear replaced the hate in her eyes. She tried to run out of the room, but I pinned her to the wall with a couch. The piano hovered over her head as it skimmed the high ceiling. She screamed and raised her arms up to protect herself as the piano suddenly dropped like a stone and stopped a mere inch from her head. Anna was trembling and trying to get control of her breathing as she stared at me with huge green eyes. The piano glided away from her and settled gently to the floor. The couch slid back and set her free. She watched me silently for a moment. Then she smirked at me. That's why you'll never win, Susanna. Because you're weak. Susanna! Duncan had found us and was climbing through the broken window. Anna ignored him and walked up to me. Are you ready to give up the crystal now? You know it won't be long before I'm back at full power. Since you don't have the guts to finish this, you. The crystal distracted her as it began to glow with a mesmerizing array of colors. With her eyes locked on it in a dreamy gaze, she raised her hand to touch it. I saw her aura then. It was well-defined and thick with the energy she had stolen from others. An exhilarating wave of power surged through me as quickly as a tornado. Now Anna's aura looked gauzy and indistinct. I caught her before she hit the ground. Anna was in a coma for three days. Her father flew in to be by her side and wanted to move her to a better facility, but he was advised against it. The doctors hadn't yet been able to determine the cause of her coma, as she had sustained no injuries. Mr. Thorne brought in specialists, who told him the same thing as the doctors on staff. We found all of this out from Caitlin, whose mom was a nurse at the hospital. The crystal of devotion was now tucked away in my jewelry box. No one else had suffered any ill effects from it, not even a cold. Duncan was sure it was because they had willingly given me their power. He had also regained his abilities much faster this time. Duncan and I had tried to wake Anna without success that night. I had put everything in the house back to order as well as I could. We needed to get Anna to the hospital, but we didn't want to be seen. We had placed her on the couch and left the front door wide open. Then Duncan drove a few streets away and parked the car. I had used my ability to make Anna's phone keep dialing the police and hanging up. I could sense when the police car pulled up to her house. We both heard the sound of the ambulance approaching not too long after that. I was surprised when Anna asked to see me after she awoke. She was, of course, in a private room. How are you feeling? I asked her. Tired, which is weird after three days of sleep. You scared me. I was worried that you wouldn't come out of it. Anna's expression was unreadable. I do believe you're telling the truth. I never wanted it to come to that. She sighed. Do me a favor. Try to say something to me with your thoughts. We were silent for a couple of minutes, and Anna's eyes glistened with tears. It takes time for it to come back, I said. It's all gone. You drained all of it. I had already sensed that, but I hadn't wanted to tell her. I didn't mean to. I don't know how it happened, I said honestly. That's the worst part. You don't even know what to do with all of that power. Is it really so terrible? I asked. You have so much more than most people. Money, looks, brains. Why isn't that enough? Anna ignored everything I had said. I'll find a way to get it back. I didn't answer. I knew that she wouldn't get it back. Her power was gone for good. There was nothing I could do but leave her to her brooding. She waited until I had reached the door. Do you believe in destiny now? I stopped and slowly turned around. Anna met my gaze, and a look of understanding passed between us. You see glimpses of it with everyone you take power from. Their destinies. That's how I knew Duncan wasn't going to end up with me. I didn't make her ask. You're going to be just fine, Anna. More than fine, in fact. I had seen her destiny. 
She was going back to her rarefied world. It was where she belonged, and she would thrive there. I knew that I would never see her again. Goodbye, Anna. Goodbye, Susanna. Tell Duncan goodbye for me. I walked out of her room and took the elevator down to the lobby. Anna had said that I didn't know what to do with all my power, but she was wrong. I planned to use it to help as many people as I could. What did she say? I looked into the pale blue eyes I had first glimpsed in a dream. We don't have to worry about her anymore. Duncan pulled me into his arms and embraced his destiny. This has been Strange Magic, written by Susanna Thompson, narrated by Sarah Sampino.